Texas against the Baylor Bears, and Miami flashed a great running game. Sophomore Edger and James came off the bench to rush for 120 yards and three touchdowns, keying Miami's 45-14 win. The defense also contributed their share. Walk-on safety Jeff Popovich returned this fumble 72 yards. He looks forward to today's game against his home state team. It's back to Miami as the Canes play game number 400 in the Orange Bowl. It's Arizona State against Miami next on Sports Channel. From the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, Sports Channel presents Miami Hurricanes football. Today, the Hurricanes kick off their home season schedule against the Arizona State Sun Devils. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Ford. I'll be telling you what's happening on the field of play. My partner, John Congemi, will tell you why. John, of course, the former uh, University of Pittsburgh and Canadian Football League quarterback. But, uh, John, the theme of today's game for both teams, which are both very young, by the way, is run the football and also stop the run. Well, they both run the football very effectively. And first, Frank, for Miami, number 28, Dyro McMillan. He'll get the start again this week against Arizona State. Had a nice game starting against Baylor in two weeks ago, but hurt his collarbone. His career yards, he has 941 yards. Did a nice job to start the game. But number five, Edron James, he'll come in if, if he can't do the job or just a uh, spell in the middle of a ball game. Had a brilliant game against Baylor last week and 120 yards with only 14 carries. It was his third 100-yard game, but he's only played nine as a hurricane, so he did a tremendous job. Pretty good percentage. Also, Arizona State, same kind of thing. Two-headed tailback in Mike Martin and J.R. Redmond. Well, the, the running game for Arizona State is paramount. Needs to come out and run the football. Both of, the, both of these guys can do it very effectively. You take a look at Mike Martin, a thousand yard runner in his career for ASU and J.R. Redmond last week had 176 yards last season he only had 327 so he did a great job in the opener important for the Canes to stop those two on the Arizona State State defensive side of the ball Pat Tillman an undersized but kind of a crazy guy at linebacker and he keys a blitzing gambling defense he's the wild man for Arizona State does a nice job of circling the wagons and going after people on defense they need to do something on defense to really affect the passing game and the running game of Miami today. Now, when you look at the quarterbacks, what Miami has going for them, obviously an experience factor with Ryan Clement, the senior, against Keeley, who's the redshirt freshman for the Sun Devils. Yeah, you get the pair of Ryans today. You get Keeley for Arizona State and Clement for the University of Miami. Keeley did a nice job in his opener with 107 yards and a TD pass. Ryan Clement, he's ninth on virtually every passing list for the University of Miami. He'll look to improve probably in the top three by the end of his career as a Hurricane. It'll be an interesting and I suspect a tough home opener for the University of Miami as the Canes play game number 400 in their history here at the Orange Bowl. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this here on Sports Channel. University of Miami football is being brought to you in part by Heineken. True to the original recipe since 1886. By Bell South, nobody knows a neighbor like a neighbor. By Office Depot, taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. And by your local Nissan retailers who remind you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. You see the Miami Hurricanes running out of the tunnel through the traditional smoke as this is game number 400 in Hurricane history here at the Orange Bowl and the Canes hope to make it a successful home opener against the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Frank Worth and John Congemi with you here on Sports Channel and so far it is a nice day for football. There is some rain in the forecast but right now partly cloudy skies as you look at Arizona State head coach Bruce Snyder in his sixth season in Tempe, Arizona. Here are your game conditions. 88 degrees, winds out of the east at 10 miles an hour. That is from your right to left as you watch on TV. The field, prescription athletic turf, and there is a 30% chance of showers. Bruce Snyder had his team in position to challenge for a national championship last year, lost in the Rose Bowl in the last second to Ohio State. They finished 11-1. His team will receive to start the ball game. Marlon Farlow and J.R. Redmond back to receive the George Gaitan kickoff. 
for the University of Miami. John, an important game for the Hurricanes, especially not only is it a ranked opponent here in the Orange Bowl, but they were only three and three here on their home turf last year. They kind of want to reestablish that dominance and the mystique that this home field once had. I think that's very important, Frank, for this 1997 Hurricane football team to come out and be explosive on offense at home and be tough and tenacious on defense because that really sets the tone and that intimidates other teams, opposing teams coming into this Orange Bowl. And that only uh, doesn't go for the team they're playing, but that spreads around the country. There's a look at Redmond, number 21, who will see a lot of time at tailback, and also Marlon Farlow, who had seven carries in their season opening win over New Mexico State. The kick from Gaetan, high and short. Farlow at the 10. Farlow dragged down on a beautiful tackle. The Miami special teams, Jeff Popovich, the walk-on from Tucson, Arizona, the only Arizonan on the Miami roster. And, John, you bet he is pumped up for this game. Sky high. Pop comes up with a big play. He ended up two weeks ago with that terrific fumble return for a touchdown. Now the first play of the game on special teams, Jeff Popovich makes his presence known. Jeff Popovich got the start at safety last week, but uh, is back in the second unit role as Dennis Scott is back in the lineup. Arizona State will have it first and 10 from the 19. The quarterback is Ryan Keeley, the red shirt freshman. You see his numbers from the opening day victory over New Mexico State. They line up with Jeff Falk in the backfield along with Mike Martin at tailback. The Sun Devils are 10-0 in games that Mike Martin has started at tailback. First and 10 from the 19, and it's Martin with the football. Finds a bit of a crease and picks up six on first down. Derek Ham and Eugene Ridgely combining on the tackle. Here's a look at the starting lineups for today's game. Lindsey Jackson is the deep threat among the backs and receivers for the Sun Devils. And in the offensive line, Kyle Murphy, an honors candidate, 6'4", 300-pound senior from Huntington Beach, California. Hurricane defense, their basic 4-3. We'll get to that after play number two. It's second and four for the Sun Devils at their own 25-yard line. First play of the ball game, Frank, the offense of Arizona State, really the offensive line, did a nice job of uh, creating a hole for the running game. They're going to need to do that to be successful against Miami. Miami has great team speed on the defensive side of the football. The only thing that's not in their favor, they do not have a lot of experience at the linebacker position, so that may be a key to look for, how the offensive line of Arizona State battles the linebacking core of Miami. All right, we're ready for the second down play. The officials had come off the field, and in fact, the uh, crew chief, R.G. Detillier, is still over by the Miami sideline. There apparently is some sort of malfunction, either with the uh, game clock or the play clock. And for now, at least, uh, play is stopped while they sort it out. Let's look at the defense while we are waiting for Miami in their traditional 4-3, a system they have used for many, many years. Damian Lewis, the redshirt freshman, had a pretty good game at Baylor. And uh, he is going to have to come up big today against this running attack. The linebackers, Jeffrey Taylor had two huge hits and played a very solid game in the opener. And the defensive backs led by Dwayne Starks, the senior out of Miami Beach, who had an 85-yard punt return in the opening game for a touchdown. And Dennis Scott, the senior, back in the lineup after some academic problems kept him out of game one. And the officials uh, syncing up the watches. They may have to keep the time. The scoreboard does did run off eight seconds. And the announcement being made that the time will be kept on the field. So you see the clock go to zero. Apparently there is a scoreboard malfunction. Well, hopefully that's not a bad omen for the Hurricanes. First no. game of the year, you got the scoreboard malfunction eight seconds into the game. But uh, we'll try to keep you updated on the time as best we can. The clock will restart. And it's second and four for Arizona State at their 25-yard line. Three wide receivers in the formation. Keeley's first pass to the outside, caught by Mitchell, and now they wave off the play. The referees have stopped the clock. Well, we're off to a uh, not exactly a rip-roaring start. We're pretty much stuck in neutral at this point. Frank, right now the teams are more frustrated than anybody because they just want to get out and play the football game. You see the coaches, Butch Davis, and you know, a little upset. Failed to start. There was no play. No play. Second down. You know, it takes a lot of time to get the uh, emotion of a football team to a peak to get ready to play, and now really 
with the officials in the game clock uh, not working properly, it really diffuses some of that energy you bring out from the locker room. So let's uh, go back to the future here, and that play never happened. It never occurred. You never saw it. We never called it. <laughs> but it's still three wide receivers in the set, and now a lone back. Mike Martin behind Ryan Keeley, the freshman. Keeley on the delay to Martin. Hit by Michael Smith, and he held it to a gain of three. It'll bring up a third and about a yard and a half. Good job inside by Miami that time. There was a little bit of a hole, a little bit of a crease, but closed quickly by the linebacking core. Number 59, Michael Smith did a nice job. Last or two weeks ago, five total tackles for the Hurricane defense. He makes the first one today. Smith, 6'3", 230, a sophomore out of Riviera Beach, and a guy who athletically at least has a chance to be about as good as any outside linebacker Miami has. It's how he develops it, his sense for the game and his mental approach to the game. J.R. Redmond checks into the backfield along with Mike Martin now on a third down and short. Keeley's pass is complete and run out of bounds for first down yardage as the pass went to J.R. Redmond. Michael Smith had the coverage for Miami. The pickup is five and a first down for the Sun Devils. I was watching Keeley in, in the pregame warm-ups. Doesn't, do, doesn't look very imposing. He's 6'2", but he gets the job done. Gets the ball outside. Beautiful catch by the backup uh, tailback that time. J.R. Redmond, number 21, for the first down for Arizona State. Again, we are unable to give you the time. The scoreboard clock is malfunctioning. Single tailback is Martin. Keeley on the counterplay to Martin. Martin tripped up and then finished off. Damian Lewis first contact, and then Michael Smith got him for a loss of a couple. Lewis in the backfield that time for the Hurricanes defense, establishing right off the bat. He's a freshman, but he gets through the block, comes underneath the block, and really makes the play go for naught right from the start. Nice job of penetration that time by the freshman Lewis. Damian Lewis out of Sulphur Springs, Texas, 6'2", 275, the redshirt freshman. And he is a guy that Miami is counting on to become a big-time player. He's still very young, has only one game under his belt. On second and 12. Motion from Ricky Boyer, the slot back. Keeley under some pressure. Steps up and his pass off the hands of his intended receiver, Ricky Boyer. And that'll bring up a third down. He had Boyer right where he wanted him that time. Underneath the linebacking uh, core of the University of Miami had two people actually open up the middle of the football field. He needs to make those plays to have success on offense. Doesn't want to give the ball up uh, when he is not pressured by the University of Miami. Keynes came with the weak side blitz that time, but Keeley stepped up and found an opening but did not complete the pass. And this is the situation that Miami wants Arizona State in the third and long. Martin, the lone setback behind Keeley. Blitz coming, Keeley again steps up, flips it down the middle, caught for a first down as Lindsey Jackson made the catch in the Miami secondary. So Miami bringing pressure from the outside, but Keeley, John, doing a nice job of stepping up. He really is. He's feeling his way around the pocket, doing a nice job for a freshman quarterback. Take a look from the defensive angle. A lot of people flooding the middle of the football field. He steps up. That's exactly why he was able to complete this pass. Finds his receiver down the middle of the football field. Jackson makes a, a spectacular catch. The ball was behind him. Comes up with a big play for Arizona State. Now the eyes set in the backfield with Polk in front of Mike Martin. And a double tight end for the Sun Devils on first and ten. Polk the fullback. Moving the pile and picks up four on first down. Host of Hurricanes in on the tackle led by Derek Hamm. Defensive end, the junior out of Merritt Island, Florida. It'll bring up second and six for the Sun Devils. Frank, always a key on defense. First down, how you can limit the running game or passing attack of an opposing offense. Miami doing a good job on the first series, but they're getting a lot of chunk that time on the ground. Almost five yards by the fullback, Paul. And Nick Ward, the cornerback for Miami, comes up limping. Nick Ward getting the start today over Nate Brooks, at cornerback. They're trying to get Nick Ward off the field, and they can't. Second and six for the Sun Devils, near midfield. Falk fakes the screen, now fires a middle screen, complete. Lindsey Jackson has it, and he's down to the Miami 43-yard line. That'll be first down yardage. This Arizona State offense looks very athletic right from the start, Frank. They're doing what they want to do with the passing game, showing a lot of different sets. That time, uh, a screen pa pass outside to the receiver does a nice job of coming underneath the uh, blocking by his offensive line. But Arizona State really moving the football. They fake the screen one way and come back with a flanker screen underneath. You see the receiver right there, Jackson, number 83, makes a couple people miss in orange jerseys. 
uh, a first down resulting for Arizona State. I'm not so sure that Randy Leapart, the center, wasn't downfield illegally because he was pretty much next to the receiver. But it's a 12-yard gain and a first down for Arizona State at the Miami 43. And now penalty flags fall again. Looks like this may be an illegal substitution penalty or a delay or a delay, game. Yeah. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. So five yards against the Sun Devils, and that will bring up a first and 15. Again, we have a clock malfunction here at the Orange Bowl. We are unable to tell you how much time is remaining in the first quarter, but uh, this is the opening possession of the game, and Arizona State started at their own 19. They have it now at the Miami 48. Three wide receivers in the ball game for the Sun Devils. On first down, the pitch to Martin. Martin picks up about three. Derek Ham in on the play for Miami, and then the uh, Cavalry arrived as Rod Mack and Nate Brooks also got there to assist on the tackle. Nate Brooks comes into the game for an injured Nick Ward. Looked like he hurt his ankle on the previous play, but a nice job by the Miami defense that time using their team speed to get to the sideline and limit the effectiveness of Arizona State's offense. You take a look on the pitch to the short side of the football field, number 29, Martin, trying to get what he can, but a lot of orange jerseys out, outside. Ham, number 71, leading the way. Both tailbacks, Martin and Redmond, in for Arizona State. Over the middle pass is complete to J.R. Redmond. Avoids one tackle, and he will have an Arizona State first down at the Miami 27. Michael Smith made the tackle, but not before Redmond picks up a first down. The offensive backfield, the one-two punch of Arizona State. We said both teams have great tailbacks. You take a look at the backup tailback, number 21, J.R. Redmond. Does a nice job catching the football and then getting downfield. I really like the play of Keeley under duress all day early, stepping up into the pocket, stands in tall and delivers. He knew he was going to get hit. Number 97, Lawson, delivers the blow, but a completion and a nice play for Arizona State. First and 10 at the 28 for the Sun Devils. Ricky Boyer in motion. Keeley under pressure, and Derek Ham has him, and Derek Ham picks up Miami's first sack of the season. Great job that time by the defense led by... Number 71, Derek Ham comes from the outside end position and finally gets to number eight, Ryan Keeley. They needed a big play on defense, and they look for that defensive line to do something. You see to your left side of your screen, number 71, Ham, fighting off the block of 51. Rumiger does a nice job of coming in and just bull rushing right up the field. Here's a different angle. You see him stalemate at the line of scrimmage, then comes around the block, uses a lot of speed, that of which Miami has plenty of, and they do a nice job of making a big play to this drive. A loss of seven, second and 17. Miami didn't have a sack in the first game as Baylor used a lot of three-step drops and quick passes to the backs. On second down, Martin with the football tripped up by Derek Ham. He falls across the 35 to close to the 33-yard line. Pickup of two or three, and that'll bring up third and long once again for the Sun Devils. That was the 12th play of this drive. This is exactly what Miami needed right now is to put up a defensive stand. Arizona State moved down the football field effectively going about 40 to 45 yards. There you see 71 Ham just getting his right arm up to trip up Mike Martin, number 29 for Arizona State. Third down, call it 15 from the Miami 33. And again, a stoppage as the official signal timeout Miami. So Miami apparently didn't have the defensive timeout, package Miami. they wanted. There is Charge a timeout Miami here in the first, first quarter. Timeout. We are scoreless at the Orange Bowl. We'll be right back here on Sports Channel. Right, Miami. It's the end of the model year at the Nissan store, and the cars are disappearing fast. It's got to be the model year-end deals available on every new 97 Nissan, right? Like $2,000 cash back or 2.9% APR financing for 60 months on the Nissan truck, Sentra, and 200SX. It's Nissan's model year-end clearance. The answers are out there, and they're only at your local Nissan store. That'll keep you company. Don't go. Don't go away. Don't what if you could reduce your stress at work right now? 
What is the matter with you today? Relax. We gotta get it done now. Breathe. Think, Herschel. Just think. Meditate. I you all the time. I know you can do it. Stress. You gotta get it done. Relax. What is, you got two hands. You Make them. friends. Herschel, you know I love you. What if you can learn from stress or tackle it? What is the matter with you today? I love you too, Coach. Back on Sports Channel, we get the word that there is 8.25 left to go in the first quarter with the clock malfunctioning. Scoreless at the Orange Bowl. Arizona State and Miami Sun Devils on the 13th play of the opening drive. Keeley back to pass. Under pressure finds Martin. Martin at the 30. And he stood up at the 25. Gets away. And now fumbles. And it looks like Miami comes up with the football. It is Miami's ball. Rod Mack, the middle linebacker, came up with the fumble. Mike Martin coughed it up at the 17-yard line. Just what Miami needed to do, force a turnover, a great pressure from the number 71, Derek Ham, just misses the quarterback, Keeley, as he delivers the ball in the flat to Martin. Martin makes a couple people miss. He stood up immediately by number 23, Dwayne Starks, then breaks the tackle, but from behind, University of Miami comes by, number 29, you, Ridgely gets the ball loose and number 51, Rod Mack on the recovery for the Canes. So the Hurricanes come up with the turnover stopping a 13 play drive. Rod Mack with the recovery. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl after this. Office Depot helps us where it counts on the bottom line. We shopped other stores, but Office Depot had more brands, bigger inventory, and guaranteed low prices. Nobody sells more office supplies than Office Depot. Still the biggest, still the best. Still taking care of business, one customer at a time. You can't beat the savings, and you certainly can't beat the service. There's no reason to go anywhere else. It's as simple as that. Office Depot. Taking care of business. Hey, Heineken's giving away season tickets to one of Florida's NFL teams. No. Yeah, get this. I went down to my local participating Heineken retailer, checked out the contest display, snagged an entry form, and now all I gotta do is watch Sunday morning NFL on Sports Channel, and I can win tickets to an upcoming game. No. Yeah, and get this. If my team runs back the opening or halftime kickoff, I win season tickets for 1998. No. Yeah. Hey, you want a Heineken? Yeah. See your local participating Heineken retailer for contest rules and regulations. There's a new team in Florida. Sports Channel Florida and CNNSI are joining forces to bring you the most complete sports coverage available. Sports Channel's full schedule of live, professional, and amateur Florida sports combined with CNNSI's sports news coverage create the perfect complement for you, the Florida sports fan. A leader in Florida sports is now offering the world of sports through CNNSI, the sports news network. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. Little over eight minutes left to go in the first quarter. The clock is malfunctioning here at the Orange Bowl, but it is scoreless as Miami's defense forced the turnover. And now Ryan Clement and the offense will take over first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. A look at Clement's career numbers, over 4,000 passing yards. Ranks in the top 10, as you see, in four career passing categories. John, John, an important game for Ryan as far as reading defenses and making the right decisions because we expect that Arizona State is going to try and come with a lot of blitz packages. He should see a lot of pressure defense, especially using the safeties coming after him. So the Miami offense, the offensive line is going to be key, whether they can give him, give Ryan enough time to throw the football on one-on-one -on -one coverage and get some of the backs loose one-on-one -on -one in the defensive secondary. And you may keep your eye on number 76, Robert Sampson, the left guard, replacing the injured Richard Mercier, who was lost for the season with the injury against Baylor. On first down, Dyrell McMillan with a huge hole. Dyrell McMillan gets away and finally taken down by Courtney Jackson up near the 35-yard line, but a big gain on first down. We talked about it just briefly a minute ago. Get somebody loose in the secondary and get them one-on-one. -on -one. You see Miami spreading the defense with their set, going three wide receivers. Then the offensive line just washes down the entire front four of the Sun Devil defense. That lets number 20 weight. 28, Dyrell McMillan getting loose in the secondary. Huge gain on first down for the Canes. Pickup of 18 for Dyrell McMillan. Carlo Joseph, the fullback, along with McMillan, the tailback. On first and 10. Clement to the outside. McMillan wide open at the 40. McMillan down the sideline. Finally run out of bounds and thrown down on the Miami sideline by Pat Tillman, the senior linebacker. But two plays, two first downs for the Canes. Miami will be in double digits this afternoon with big plays just because of the type of defense that Arizona State wants to gamble with. They came after Ryan that time with a lot of pressure. They didn't account for the uh, 
Dyro McMillan in the backfield. One of the linebackers came in. A free safety didn't get over to cover. He missed him out of the weak side. McMillan makes a big play and makes the defense of Arizona State pay for their penalty. Pickup of 22 for the Canes on the completion to McMillan. Bubba Franks with tight end, shifting from right to left in the formation. Magic Fenton in motion to the top of your screen. On first down, McMillan with the football. Bounces off one, still going at the ASU 40. And finally run out of bounds by Pat Tillman once again. But Daryl McMillan picks up about six on first down. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for the Hurricanes on offense. Magic Benton missed the first quarter at Baylor last week with a bit of a disciplinary action by his teammates. He starts today. On the offensive line, Robert Sampson we mentioned in there for the injured Richard Mercier. Arizona State defense, Jeremy Stott, the senior at 288 pounds and 6'6 is a four. Stephen Trejo, a redshirt freshman, getting his second consecutive start. Jason Simmons and Courtney Jackson, two excellent cornerbacks. Second down for Miami, movement along the front. The play continues, and Darrell McMillan powers through and across the 30-yard line in the arms of Mitchell Friedman and Pat Tillman. Arizona State doing nothing but catching Miami running backs right now via a big play on a pass or, or a running play. Looks like a flag down on the play. Offside against Arizona State. Miami will decline because McMillan did pick up first down yardage. Offside. Defense. Penalty refused. Result of the play. First down. Let's take another look at the replay right in the middle of the line. There you see it, Jeremy Stott, number 92, jumping offside. But the play continued, and Miami picked up 12 and a first down. Kane started at their 17. Now the ball just inside the Sun Devil 30. The delay to McMillan. Not much there. He'll squeeze a couple yards out of it. And it'll be second down. Pat Tillman along with uh, Aubrey Battle and Vince Amy, number 98, in on the stop for the Sun Devils. Pick up a two by McMillan on first down. On first down, that's the first play this Arizona State defense has really played honest. They didn't try to stunt. They didn't try to bring a lot of pressure with their defensive backfield, and they held Miami to a very minimal gain on first down. Dyro McMillan and Carlo Joseph in the backfield behind Ryan Clement. Both wide receivers, Omar Roll and Magic Benton, will be split to the top of your screen. And now they come with pressure, Frank. And they back out of it. They do not blitz. Clement. Over the middle and overthrows Magic Benton at the Arizona State 13. Coverage by Courtney Jackson along with Paul Reynolds, the middle linebacker who made a nice deep drop and forced the overthrow. It'll bring up third and long for Miami. Nice job by Arizona State that time, really showing their hand. Ryan checks off, and then he was outnumbered going downfield. Really, both offensive receivers double covered uh, on the outside by inside help on that Arizona State defense. Ryan tries to squeeze the football in. To Magic, but just a little high. There was a lot of uh, white shirts of Arizona State around the football. Miami has to get just inside the Arizona State 20 to pick up the first down. Clement now under some pressure. Steps around in the pocket, throws incomplete at the 15-yard line. A good leaping attempt by the intended receiver, Chris Jones. But the incompletion will bring up fourth down and the Miami kicking unit onto the field. Chris Jones trying to get up one hand, his right hand up. And Ryan did a nice job of, of trying to buy some time. There's some Arizona State. There's two Arizona State players down on the football field. It's like they might have clanked helmets on that one. So the Miami drive stalling at the Arizona State 28-yard line. We'll check out the injuries, and we're going to take a timeout here in the first quarter with Arizona State and Miami scoreless as the trainers tend to Damian Richardson and Courtney Jackson. We'll be back right after this. Miami back at the Orange Bowl. 6.03 left to go in the first quarter. Scoreless between Arizona State and Miami. Both teams have had the ball once. Miami lining up for a field goal attempt from Andy Crossland. Crossland, six out of six in extra points this year. And one of one field goals, a 43-yarder against Baylor in the opening game. Jeff Popovich, the holder, standing next to Andy Crossland. And now we're back into play. Crossland uh, iced by the injury timeout, so he stepped back to midfield, well away from everybody. And Popovich will put the ball down uh, between the 35 and 36-yard lines, add the 10 to the end zone, and we'll have a 45-yard field goal try. Pat Del Vecchio, the snapper. Low snap, Popovich gets it down, Crossland's pick, drifting left and no good. The miss from 45 yards by Andy Crossland, and Arizona State will take over first and 10 at their 28-yard line. Frank, not sure if the snap was low or it was just mishandled by Popovich. It looks like he did a good job to get the ball down 
the ball just drifting left of the left upright, but any result, no result, and there's no points. Miami goes down the field with ease, but didn't cash in when it counted. So both teams able to move the football, but Arizona State losing the ball on a fumble and Miami missing the field goal. So the Sun Devils take over first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Ryan Keeley, the redshirt freshman quarterback, making his second collegiate start. Mike Martin with the football, and Derek Ham has Mike Martin. No gain, a loss of maybe a yard. Oh, a great play up front by number 71. He's having a terrific game, and we're still in the first quarter. Number 71, Derek Ham, that time fights off number 56, Kyle Murphy up front. Just won the battle. You see him right inside there. Just goes inside of 56 and does a great job of tackling the senior running back from Arizona State, Mike Martin. But you can't say enough about Ham early in this game, the leader on defense. Second and 11 for the Sun Devils at their 27. J.R. Redmond, now the running back behind Keeley. Boyer in motion. Keeley under pressure from Smith, dumps it off to Redmond. And Redmond's got some space, knocked down at the 36-yard line. The ball came out, but the officials say he was down. It'll be about two yards short of a first down. Michael Lawson delivered the hit. And Redmond remains on the field as Michael Lawson really popped it. Lawson did uh, deliver a, a big blow that time to the sophomore running back, Redmond. You could see uh, before on the, on the replay, Michael Smith, number 59, coming in, forcing the throw early, but the big hit coming right here. Number 97, Michael Lawson pursuing downfield from his defensive tackle position. That's a, something you don't see, and, and Butch Davis and the coaching staff, Bill Miller, they do a great job of getting their people to the football, even uh, coming across the football field from one side to the other. You see number 97 just laying out the running back for Arizona State, Redmond. A little hard to tell when that ball came out, but it was close either way, and you see the ASU training staff still attending the Mike Redmond. It was a pickup of nine. It'll bring up a third and two when we resume play. A good look at J.R. Redmond, who had... Uh, 10 carries for 176 yards, which of course is a 17.6 a average in the opener against New Mexico State, including a 93-yard touchdown run, and those are the kind that'll pump your average up a little bit. Yeah, that'll get the stats where you want to. Take another look at the hit delivered by Michael Lawson. And let's try and see where the ball comes out here. It's in the middle of a pile. It looks like his knee was down, and then the ball came out. So I think a good call by the Big East officiating through there. Arizona State retaining possession. Michael Lawson, the... Uh, out of Riviera Beach, or Delray Beach, excuse me, the junior, 6'2", 275. Jeff Falk and Mike Martin, the running backs now behind Keeley on third and two. We have 5.06 left to go first quarter in a scoreless game. Martin with the football, and Martin is close to the first down. He may be just a tad short. Damian Lewis coming up and making the play with help from Rod Mack, and it'll bring up fourth down. Miami showing great team speed on defense, especially their front four. Derek Ham's made a ton of plays. Now you get the freshman out of Sulphur Springs, Texas, number 92. Lewis does a nice job coming from the right side of the football field all the way into the backfield. Take a look at the top of your screen. You see Lewis coming right down the football field, right down the yard line. Great job of pursuit. And now the officials are calling the me for a measurement as the sticks are on the far side of the field. So they're going to make sure. It looks like it's fourth down but they are going to be absolutely certain, or perhaps Arizona State requested the measurement. Looks like they're going to be about a half a football short, Frank, from here, or at least a football short. Yeah, it's a little more than that. It's closer to, to a yard. So that'll bring up fourth down, and the punter coming out on the field. That'll be Williams, Marcus Williams, the senior out of Tempe, Arizona, and Dwayne Starks, who had four returns for a 30.8-yard average in Miami's opener, stands back at the Miami 35-yard line waiting to receive the punt. Yeah, Dwayne went 85 yards in the opener against Baylor, and uh, the Miami special team's really been a key the last couple of years in sustaining their field position for the offensive football team. So see if Dwayne can uh, get Miami back into great field position again. Starks is now backed up to the Miami 20. As Williams stands at his own 22. First quarter, scoreless here at the Orange Bowl. Miami coming after him, and they almost got there. Nick Ward almost got there. Punt will roll dead inside the Miami 30 at the 26-yard line. Nick Ward came oh so close. And in fact, from the indication of the official, he might have gotten a finger on the football, but Miami will take over first and 10. Miami did a great job disguising where they were coming from. 
You see number 27, uh, Fitzgerald, he moved down from the outside. That allowed some inside pressure, and Miami really looks to get close to a kick again. Last year they had great success with Tremaine Mack blocking punts. This time you see from the top of your screen, the orange jersey coming out of nowhere. Number three, Nick Ward, just misses it almost by the length of a football. 37-yard punt. Miami takes over first and 10 at their 26. Chris Jones, the tight end, shifting from right to left in the formation. Motion from Magic Benton. The delay to Darrell McMillan. Again, a huge hole. McMillan with the first down and more. Richardson, Damian Richardson, the free safety, made the tackle, but not before Darrell McMillan picked up a dozen. This offensive line is doing a terrific job getting, pushing people around the line of scrimmage. Take a look at the orange jerseys kicking out, moving down, and staying on their blocks. Great at point of attack, number 79, Curlin Blaze. Just turns down the defensive front, and McMillan, there's huge holds, lots of running room in the secondary of Arizona State. First down Miami at their own 38. Second possession for the Canes. They missed a field goal after moving the ball well the first time they had it. Delay to McMillan. Gets away from one, being chased, and McMillan dropped for no gain. Good play by Jason Simmons, the corner coming up on run support after the play was broken down by Aubrey Battle, number 97. Dyro McMillan just trying to get what he can on the, on the uh, sprint draw that time, going up the football field. But you said the secondary that time buying some time, getting in with, for the play on Arizona State's behalf. No gain. Bring up second and ten for the Hurricanes. Again, the clock not working here at the Orange Bowl but we are under five minutes to play in the first period. On second and 10, Clement fakes the draw. Lyon, deep sideline route, Magic Benton has it, complete for the first down at the Arizona State 43-yard line. Frank, this might all come back for a holding call, it looks like. He had a lot of pressure. Ryan did a nice job of staying in the pocket. It was man-to-man -man coverage. He waits for Magic Benton to clear the field just puts a little bit of a, a touch pass over the secondary number three you see there. It does a nice job. It looks like it's coming back for holding. Holding was the indication from the Big East officiating crew, and that'll negate a big gain to Magic Benton. Here's the call. Holding. holding. Offense. Ten yards. Spotted a foul. Replay second down. So that always hurts. The spot of the foul is where the penalty is marked off. We'll take another look at the replay and see if we can... Uh, pick up the culprit tough to see inside there maybe on the outside right yeah, there it looks on curlin blade yeah it looks like he curlin had his right arm up uh, up the collar of the defender coming in to put pressure on ryan clement that time but that puts miami in a big hole second and 22 for the hurricanes after the holding penalty delay to mcmillan trying to pick his way through we'll pick up about five or six yards before the defense closes in damian richardson the safety again making the tackle, and that'll bring up third and long for Miami. And a hurricane down on the field. That's Curlin Blaze, the right offensive tackle. And again, John, uh, offensive lineman going down is something Butch Davis hates to see. Well, you hate to see anybody down on the football field on either team, but where Miami can ill afford to lose players is on that offensive line. They're, they're short right now with, uh, you know, Carlos Cajayas went out a little bit in the first game, and Ty Wise is, is banged up, and Robert Sampson comes in to take Mercier's place, and now you have Curlin Blaze down on the play. So Freeman Brown, number 78, the senior at 6'7", 340 pounds. He'll have to come in and do the job at right offensive tackle. Well, Miami thin experience-wise uh, in the second unit on the offensive line, and losing Mercier for the season in the opener certainly was a huge blow. And now if Curlin Blaze can't go, Butch Davis is going to have to rack his brain and... Uh, Get some effort out of guys he wasn't really counting on for extended snaps. Well, right Curlin there. He's up and flexing the knee. Yeah, you see and him he's going to jog off, off the right. field. So hopefully that's a good sign. For, and even gets a little, <laughs> little Muhammad Ali I in like there. the shuffle there. Wait, I didn't think he was showing our key how shuffle. quick he is. Yeah, that's course, right. If he, if he collapses after that, then he's really going to catch some. <laughs> Let's take a quick look and see if uh, we can pick up what happened to Curlin toward the top of your screen. He just got, like, leg yeah, a got leg whipped a little bit. leg whipped in there. Right here. Third and long for Miami. They have to reach their own 48-yard line. Third and 18. Clement steps up in the pocket. Going deep for Magic Fenton and overthrows him at the Arizona State 25. Jason Simmons had the coverage and 
Ryan Clement and Magic Benton missing connections there, so it'll bring up fourth down and the punting unit on the field for the Hurricanes. Well, right now what Ryan needs to do is they're showing pressure right away. Ryan needs to put the snap count on the first sound so he can catch them in disguising their defenses, and that way the Miami offensive wide receivers can get downfield. You see Butch Davis talking to Magic Benton, perhaps a little confusion on the route there as Andy Crossland kicks it away to J.R. Redmond. Redmond at his own 32. Dangerous man. Redmond to the 45, 47-yard line before he is dropped. Cliff Jackson making the special teams tackle for Miami, but good field position as a 16-yard return on the punt by J.R. Redmond. Nice job by the special teams of the Sun Devils that time, gaining great field position. Miami's defense is going to have to come up big again. Look for Ham up front and Lewis, the young guys, Ham the junior and Lewis the freshman. You saw Denny Fortney in, the, in week number one two weeks ago really do a great job early. Now this time, Lewis and Ham are going to have to continue to play well. 38 yards on the Crossland punt and the return from the 32 to the 48-yard uh, line of 16 by J.R. Redmond. As you see Ryan Clement discussing things on the sideline and trying to get things worked out in the passing game. Miami uh, running the ball pretty well, but struggling in the passing game so far. They have a big completion wiped out by the holding penalty. Yeah, Ryan trying to talk to his receivers right now, getting him where he wants them to be versus that pressure. You know, if, if the guy's going to be there and, and show blitz early, they need to go on the first on the first sound and get up to the line and go and, and, and make some one-on-one -on -one plays and just throw the ball up in the air. So Miami has had the ball twice, has failed to score. Arizona, same story. Two possessions, nothing on the board. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by ESPN Regional solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of ESPN Regional or Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Perlin Blaze, we are told, has a right knee sprain but is expected to return to the football game. Let's take a look at Ryan Keeley's numbers today. Good. Six for seven, 67 yards. He did a good job in the first game in their opener two weeks ago with his uh, percentage of completions had 107 yards passing and one touchdown. I believe he was 11 of 17 does a nice job he he looks to tell you the truth frank and watching him in warm-up he looked a lot like me a couple people on the sidelines were saying hey that's the starter he doesn't look all that impressive <laughs> you know i wasn't one of those guys that were 6'4 230 pounds but when you get into a football game you get to know where the football needs to be and i think that's what what ryan does very well early in this ball game against miami stepping up into the pressure of the defense and finding receivers and using uh, his ability he knows his limitations and he's using his backfield uh, perfect right now Arizona State has been a good road team, as have the Hurricanes. ASU with a six-game road winning streak. Miami has won eight in a row on the road. But, of course, this game in the Orange Bowl, game number 400 in Miami history. Kendrick Bates, the tight end, motioning. And the handoff goes to Mike Martin, who crosses midfield in the arms of Jeffrey Taylor and picks up close to six on first down. Offensive line that time, number 64, Randy Leapard does a great job of, of uh, creating a, a huge hole in the middle of the football field, the center, take a look at 64. He chips off and then goes right down the field on a linebacker and does a nice job of just pushing that line all the way down. I believe he's got a hold of Rod Mack in the middle, but does a nice job creating holes for that offensive backfield. Second and four for Arizona State in Miami territory. Keeley looks to put it up. Across the middle, complete to the tight end. And for a first down yardage, number 88, Matt, uh, Matt Sir, so, Sir Cone, excuse me, Matt Sir Cone picks up the reception and the first down. The play going from the 47 to the 30 of Miami, a gain of 17. Well, I'm not sure what game tape Arizona State looked at because two weeks ago against Baylor, Baylor really got to the outside in the three-step passing in the perimeter game. Today, Arizona State really attacking Miami up the middle with tight ends and running backs. Wide receivers coming in on deep in routes. They're affecting the middle of the field. Damian Lewis jumped offside. And that'll cost Miami five. Damian Lewis, the redshirt freshman. We have an encroachment by contact. Defense, five yards. Replay first down. So it'll be first and five for the Sun Devils as the football moved to the Miami 25-yard line. And it'll bring up first and five. Well, as hot as it is right now, Frank, Miami needs to take a deep breath and relax and really get back to playing sound defense. On first down, Keeley with the rollout. Complete to J.R. Redmond, Dennis Scott, and Dwayne Starks run him out of bounds. But first down yardage, a pickup of seven inside the Miami 20. 
See, Dwayne Starks, number 23. Last or Two weeks ago, he had 14 total tackles for the University of Miami. That time, coming up on a big play, coming from the cornerback position. You see Keeley, number eight, rolling out, just getting the football outside. We talked about the middle of the field. This time, he gets it to Redmond on the outside. And you see Starks, along with number 25, Dennis Scott, from the strong safety position, pushing him out of bounds. 115 left to go first quarter. Arizona State threatening at the Miami 18. On first down, inside handoff to Park, the fullback. Denny Fortney and Damian Lewis combined to bring him down after a pickup of about a yard, yard and a half. Very slow developing play that time by Arizona State. They tried to get the left guard and left tackle around to try a trapping play or long counter play. You see the guard and tackle on the left side really coming along, but Denny Fortney, number 99, sheds one blocker and then throws Kyle Murphy, number 56, out of the way. Take a look right here coming right at you. Denny sheds the first blocker, uh, takes on the running back and stops him dead in his tracks. A lot of orange jerseys around the football for the Canes. Second down and eight for Arizona State. Hawk and Redmond set behind Keeley. It's Redmond with the football and gets across the 15 to the 13, tripped up by Rod Mack and a flag on the play. It's going to be holding against Arizona State. You called it, Frank, right in the middle of the football field, holding against Arizona State. Rod Mack, number 51, the middle linebacker for the Canes, doing a nice job solidifying. There will be no running room in the middle of the football field today. Uh, hopefully, when they get closer down to the goal line, they've been trying to attack the middle of the field. That time, to no avail. Here's the call. Holding. Offense. 10 yards. Spotted a foul. Replay second down. Foul occurred basically along the line of scrimmage, so it'll move it back to the Miami 27-yard line. We'll look at a replay, and I think Denny Fortney caused it with some penetration. He certainly did right there. That's almost an armbar takedown by Troy Davis, <laughs> number 79. Denny Fortney, two plays in a row, doing a nice job of creating pressure by his presence. The first time, shutting off a blocker and getting to the running back. That time, pinching down on the inside and beating Troy Davis to the spot inside, offensively closer to the line of scrimmage. With time running down in the first quarter, Bruce Snyder wanted a timeout. And I'm not sure why, because he's going against the wind right now. You would think that he'd want to want it to switch around and go with the wind. For a possible field goal try if they do end up uh, indeed getting stopped by the University of Miami. He said an armbar takedown by Davis. I want to know when he's getting ready to do the vertical suplex. That's right. Hey, they're talented, those wrestlers. They can do a lot of things, but did a good job that time. Number 99, Denny Fortney, of really forcing Troy Davis into a bad play. So after the timeout, Arizona State will have a second and 19. We are scoreless. Uh, Arizona State on their third possession of the game. Miami has had two possessions. The only scoring threat, Miami's Andy Crossland missed a 45-yard field goal. Arizona State did penetrate the Miami 25 on their first possession, but fumbled, and Miami recovered the football on the turnover. A good look at Denny Fortney, the 6'3", 265 senior out of Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Eight tackles last week against Baylor, two for losses, and also broke up one pass. And uh, they're looking for a lot of leadership out of Denny Fortney on this very young defensive line, a very young Miami defense overall. And I think he's really doing a great job. You know, in week one against Baylor, you said Frank had a huge game early and, and had great numbers. And now that's rubbing off. It looked like later in that ball game, Lewis came along and Ham and Michael Lawson had a play with the uh, substitu uh, substituting for Chad Pegues up front. So there's a lot of people really creating havoc. And it all starts with number 99, Fortney. This is the season home opener for Miami, and the Canes have won their last 12 season openers by a combined score of, well, you see it, 496 to 60. So uh, they are pretty good in the home openers. But Arizona State will give them a tough test today. The Sun Devils ranked 23rd in the country. J.R. Redman and Jeff Paul behind Keeley on a second and 19. They'll give it to Paul, the fullback, tripped up right away and picks up only two. Derek Ham along with Damian Lewis, give them credit for the tackle, and Rod Mack also stuck a helmet in there. Kind of conservative call on second and long. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. After 15 minutes at the Orange Bowl, it is Miami nothing and Arizona State nothing. We'll be back with second quarter action on Sports Channel right after these messages. after one quarter in the Orange Bowl. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Sports Channel. Nobody covers the NFL like Sports Channel. Tune in to Sunday Morning NFL every Sunday at 10 a.m. The state's most comprehensive pregame show takes a look at Florida's NFL matchups as the undefeated Dolphins take on the world champion Packers. The 2-0 Tampa Bucks battle the Minnesota Vikings. It's all right here on Sports Channel Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Look at some uh, quickie stats from the first quarter. Well, we'll get to those in a moment. It's because it's third and 17. There is numbers. 
And Miami with 72 total yards, Arizona State 112. Third and 17 for Arizona State. Keeley under some pressure. Flips it to the outside, juggling catch by Redman. Tripped up as he reaches the 16-yard line, well short of the first down. Nick Ward in on the tackle for Miami, and that'll bring up a fourth down and a field goal attempt by Arizona State. We'll watch Keeley step up in the pocket. Again, you get pressure from outside. You see him, Lewis just misses him. Then he sidearms it out to Redmond, number 21. One catch per throw next time. I know JR wants to get two hands on the football, and he tries to protect it, gets it up the field to the 16-yard line of the Miami Hurricanes. That'll bring on Robert Neese, as in nephew and niece. That's how it's pronounced from the 25-yard line. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is on the way, and through there. And Arizona State on a Robert Neese 34-yard field goal leads the Hurricanes by a score of 3 to nothing. Early second quarter, and the Sun Devils break on top. Nice drive that time by Arizona State. They get a field goal out of it, but both teams have really gone up and down the field. That time, Arizona State cashing in. You look for more big plays out of these offenses with a lot of pressure being applied and, and trying, especially from Arizona State, a lot of blitzing going on on their defense. So look for Miami to come back and try to open it up with some more big plays down the field. Well, Arizona State doing what they want to do, control the football, keep it away from Ryan Clement and the Hurricane offense. Miami defense did stiffen up there with the help of the holding penalty and held the uh, Sun Devils to three points. Yeah, they did a great job. They've done it in the, in the first quarter. Now they come back the first series of the second quarter and they stop Arizona State on third down. Gets the field goal, gets them on the board for a 3-0 score. You know, at this point, with the youth on Miami's defense, I don't know if they're really good enough to shut any decent team down completely. So it's up to the offense to, you know, help them along. The offense has got to move the ball. They've got to get some points up. Andy Crossland missed from 45. Nice made from 34 for Arizona State. That's the difference in the game right now. It was a 36-yard drive by Arizona State. Seven plays consumed three minutes and 16 seconds and ended with the Robert Nice 34-yard field goal. Back to receive Trent Jones and Jeff Popovich for Miami as uh, Williams will kick it off. Nice sunny day at the Orange Bowl. Some thunder showers in the forecast as this kickoff sails out of bounds and Miami will get the good field position up at the 35-yard line. Miami has moved the football on offense. Uh, last time they had the football, a big play from Clement to Magic Benton on the crossing route, but it was brought back due to a holding call Let's see if Miami can really spread the defense with Remember formations. Position. Kicking team. By rule, the ball is put on the 35-yard line. First down. Another look at the scoring drive for you graphically. As Arizona State started with good field position and moved it 36 yards and then got the field goal actually from Robert Neese, not Williams. Williams does the punting and the uh, kickoff. And Neese is the field goal kicker. And Freeman Brown is in at right tackle for the Miami Hurricanes. Edger and James makes his first appearance in the Miami backfield. Darrell McMillan played the first quarter and ran the ball well. James first carry. James looks to the outside, cuts back in, and picks up five on first down. Jeremy Stott along with Vince Amy making the tackle. Yeah, last week, Frank, number five, Edger and James, he went for over 100 yards. That's the third time he's done that in his career. He looks to put the excitement back into the Miami running game. The one-two punch for Miami, McMillan and James, they do a great job. There's a power runner in McMillan, and he can also break it wide open, but Edger and James, he's the guy that can make it happen on one play. Edger and James, seven carries, 49 yards in the first quarter. Excuse me, Darrell McMillan, and now Edger and James in the game, and Edger has the football, trying to get to the outside. Good stiff arm. He'll pick up six yards and should have a Miami first down as Jason Simmons ran him out of bounds. Using his speed that time, there was really nothing doing inside the tackle box. Bounces it outside and does a nice job to pick up the first down. Get a look from the back of the backfield. You see, trying to cut inside at first, Nick Williams gets a, stall, a stalemate up at the line of scrimmage and then uses his strength outside, lowering his head on Simmons, the uh, defensive back for the Arizona State Sun Devils. Edger and James, the sophomore out of Immokalee, Florida, a hugely talented running back, but splitting time with Darrell McMillan as the Canes try and give the defenses different looks. Edger and James again behind a Robert Sampson block. Picks his way through, and it's going to be a holding call. Maybe they got Sampson as James picks up seven before he is dragged down. And this one's going to come back, a holding call on Miami. Miami has really hurt themselves in this football game with offensive penalties on plays that have been positive. You take the Magic Benton 
Big pass play from Ryan Clement back, and now you take a first down run of about five or six yards, and it's going to come back and put Miami into a, a, a hole. Holding. Offense. Ten yards. Spotted a foul. Replay first down. Watch 76, Robert Sampson, the sophomore out of Brandon, and he's just called for the takedown there on Jeremy Stott. Yeah, it didn't look as bad on the replay as it did watching it the first time around, but it looks like the back uh, back official really had a, the best view of it through the flag on number 76, Sampson. So the ball comes back to the 33-yard line. It'll be first and 23 for Miami as the spot of the foul was three yards behind the original line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers set for the Canes. James, the lone running back. Clement to the outside. Good catch. Run out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Reggie Wayne, the freshman out of Marrero, Louisiana, and he picks up 14. Yeah, Reggie Wayne had one catch, his first catch for a hurricane uh, in a hurricane uniform two weeks ago. This time, Ryan taking a peek outside early on the way back and then steps up, delivers the football outside. Reggie does a nice job of going up and getting the football. Good pass play, good completion for number 87, Wayne. So don't try to pick it up all at once. It was first and 23, and they got 14. So it'll be second and nine from the Miami 47. Magic Benton with motion. Give to Edger and James. A hit right away. He'll squeeze a yard or two out of it. Vince Amy and Jeremy Stott making the tackle. And that'll bring up third and long for Miami. Vince Amy doing a nice job, just as Lewis does on the defensive front for Miami. That time, Amy comes right down the line of scrimmage and makes the play from behind. Take a look at the top of your screen. Nobody blocks number 98. Number 78, the offensive tackle, Freeman Brown, does goes straight down and doesn't even pay attention to the defensive tackle. And you see Amy coming right down, putting his nose right on the football, taking down number five, James. Third and eight for the Hurricanes. They have to reach the Arizona State 44. Chris Jones, the tight end in motion. Arizona State jumps, and this will cost them five unless a Miami player moves. Well, the Arizona State people tell us that this may be their fastest team ever. When Bruce Snyder got there six years ago, they had very average team speed. Dead Here's ball. the call. Encroachment. Contact. Defense. Five yards. Replay third down. And that'll make it third and three instead of third and eight. But uh, Bruce Snyder has gone out. He's recruited very heavily in the state of California. And uh, the ASU people tell us this probably is the quickest team, the fastest team that Arizona State has ever had. And it's hard to believe, Frank. They say they're a year away from where they want to be. Last year, they were pretty darn good. Well, they lost their four best offensive players, and they lost Derek Rogers, who now plays for the Dolphins. But still some young talent on third and three. Quick out, complete to Magic Benton. Eludes one tackler and finally tripped up. But he has first down yardage at the 30-yard uh, line. Adam Archuleta, the backup linebacker, excuse me, the 35-yard line of Arizona State, but a first down completion to Magic Benton. Nice play, nice pass play outside by Ryan Clement to number eight, Magic Benton. Just a little pitch and catch, three-step drop, gets it outside. The thing is, the key to this play makes a person miss. Number 10, Simmons misses on the tackle. That allows Benton to go up the left sideline for a big gain and a nice pickup on third down, Frank. Gain from the Miami 48 to the Arizona State 35 is 17 yards. Edger and James, the lone setback. Miami going with the double tight end. Franks and Fulcher. James has the ball. Good move in the hole to get away. And I'll tell you what, he made four yards when he should have lost two. Yeah, he made him smell himself small when he needs to be, Frank. He can go and lower his shoulder, but that time just trying to go sideways a little bit with his shoulder pads and squeezes through the offensive line. Does a nice job. Runs inside very well. You see number five, the sophomore, just slides and slithers, turns his shoulders to get through the hole, and then he goes north and south. He really never takes a shot straight on, Frank. He always catches something uh, with his shoulder pads as he's going forward. That's what all good backs do. Took a bit of a late shot there after Mitchell Friedman and Steven Trejo combined to make the tackle. Second and six Hurricanes at the Arizona State 31. Edger and James waiting for his blocks to develop as he does so well, but that time waited just a little too much, and Arizona State swarms him at the 29-yard line. I can't believe they're going to call motion, illegal motion on Daryl Jones. He was coming from the right side of the offensive set to the left side, and it looks like he went upfield a little too soon, and that should be the call. They're calling offside on Arizona State. Big break for Miami. And that'll replay second down, make it second and short. Second and one. ASU leading it 3-0. If the scoreboard clock is correct, we had a malfunction in the first quarter. It reads 10:44 to go in the second period. Defense, five-yard penalty, replay second down. After the first ball game at Baylor, Frank Miami only penalized, I believe, twice in that entire ball game. You see, today there's been a, a lot of yellow flags on both sides of the football field for Arizona State and against Miami. So 
This game not played as pure as the first one, but Miami still moving the ball effectively. Oh, we've had about five holding penalties combined. Second and short for the Canes. They'll give it to Edger and James. Trying to run behind Carlos Calleas. Pat Tillman hanging on for dear life, although Edgerin does pick up three and a first down. Pat Tillman, the linebacker for ASU, he's only 5'11", 206. He's a senior. He had six tackles, total tackles, two weeks ago. It's amazing what number five James can do with him on his coattails. He made a move and, and gained four yards with Tillman hanging all over him. The counterplay, you see 72, Cajas coming in and burrowing down, but you see 42 will hang on to, to James, and he'll carry him for about three or four yards and a cane first down. Well, this is where Miami has got to be aggressive and get it in the end zone if they want to win this football game. First down at the 23. The lay handoff, James, tripped up in the backfield, still keeps the legs moving, and will almost get back to the line of scrimmage. Pat Tillman, Phillip Brown making the tackle. That time ASU gambles on a blitz. They bring a couple uh, safeties along with the linebackers, and Miami really had uh, got caught in a play they might not have wanted to be in. But you'll see, you'll take a look at the replay. You'll see the linebackers inside just chip off, but outside to the right, you see the safety come in from the defensive secondary, and that really threw the timing of the play off completely. Paul Reynolds, the middle linebacker, made the first contact. Loss of about a half yard, second and long for Miami. Looked like ASU jumped again. Clement to the end zone, tipped away by Jason Simmons, incomplete. Magic Benton, the intended receiver. But let's check out the penalty flags. That was a good job by Ryan. He knew he had a free play to work with, and he tried to push the football down into the end zone. You see it again, offside Arizona State, and this has got to be driving Bruce Snyder crazy. I would think so. He's looking for answers, and he can't He can't come up with one. He's going to try to yell, Outside. vent his frustration Defense. out by yelling at somebody. Let's take a look. Replay and again, it's down. the right defensive tackle. There is the jump. Look like Stott, number 92, jumps offside. And he, that's the second time he's been guilty of that, and you don't expect that out of your senior on your defensive line. A second and six for the Hurricanes at the ASU 16-yard line. Edger and James and Nick Williams, the running backs behind Ryan Clement. Give to Edger and James. Tripped over a blade of grass, I assume, <laughs> in the backfield and will wind up losing a couple of yards. Yeah, never got his footing. That play was really going nowhere from the start. ASU doing a nice job of stretching the Miami offense out to the outside by the sideline. You see the deep handoff in the backfield. Just trips over his own feet that time, James does, and that's very rare because he's got great feet. John, I would like, if Miami's going to run the football, you see Edger and James's numbers, not what we expect out of him, but I'd like to see him with those quick traps and quick openers that were successful in the first two drives. The slower developing plays, looks like Arizona State is running them down. Third down and nine for the Hurricanes. Clement to the corner, going for Omar Roll. Penalty flag forthcoming, and interference call on Courtney Jackson. Really, Courtney Jackson didn't need to do that. Had great position and great coverage. That time on the outside on Omar Roll, the ball was thrown up the field. Didn't look like there would have been a reception for a touchdown and a, a bad break for, if you're an ASU fan and Courtney Jackson really colliding with Omar Roll in the end zone. Well, he, he does impede him to the football. Now, whether that's catchable, you can debate that, but, but Omar had no chance to go and get it because he was being impeded for a couple of yards. Yes, he was, uh, but the ball was, wasn't going to be caught. It was inside, and Jackson had perfect position on the play. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. It'll give the Hurricanes first and goal at the Arizona State seven-yard line. Well, Frank, with Miami getting into the red zone, last week they were two for two, 100% in touchdowns. And last season, they were 84%. They were in the red zone. They scored. So Miami's very productive getting touchdowns when they get inside the 20-yard line. Number 21, James Jackson now joins Edger and James in the backfield as Miami goes with essentially two tailbacks. On first down, the quick flip to Jackson. And that is covered well by Jason Simmons. A bad play on first down for Miami as they'll lose four yards in a first and goal situation. That time Simmons broke down and made the tackle, did not miss. Had a great job of getting position on the outside. James Jackson catching the flare pass out in the offensive backfield. He was out man though. There were three white jerseys waiting for him. The first one there, Jason Simmons, number 10. You see Bruce Snyder's reaction. It looked like uh, Arizona State kind of rolled up into that area. And uh, James Jackson had no chance. So Jason Simmons made the play. Second and goal for the Hurricanes. Edger and James, the lone running back. Edger and James on the draw. Dragged down a beautiful defensive play by Che Britton. 
as he got away from Freeman Brown, and James lost another half yard. Jay Britton does a nice job. Freeman Brown needs to stay on his block longer because that's a touchdown on the right side of your screen. Big number 78 needs to stay on Shea just about a half a count longer because Edger and James is going in untouched. Omar Roll had a nice position down the field on the linebacker. He's going to cut left and go to the left pylon right here. But a nice job by Britton bringing down number five, James. Well, Freeman Brown, the drawback on the 340-pounder is not very good footwork, and uh, it cost the Hurricanes on that play. Third and goal, Miami goes with a double tight end. Quick flip to Chris Jones. Chris Jones tries to get away and can't as Mitchell Friedman brings him down at the three-yard line. So it's decision time for Butch Davis. Yeah, if they're on the three-yard line, I think it's a no-brainer. They should kick the field goal. Field goal unit coming on the field. Yeah, three yards. You, you want to get this game tied. 6.53 uh, left to go until halftime. And you'd like to think you can put three points up here and just come away with something. Well, you know, you've been moving the football field up and down the field, and you've got about five or six penalties that have been holding you back. Let's get in and tie the score and, and take our losses. You, know, you don't get the touchdown, but at least you get it back to 3-3 and give your defense uh, time to go three and out. Jeff Popovich will hold. Pat Del Vecchio will snap it. And now timeout called by Jeff Popovich. Uh, something was wrong with the hurricane formation on the field goal, and Jeff Popovich didn't want to take any chances. 6.29 left to go second quarter. It's Arizona State 3, Miami nothing. We'll be right back on Sports Channel. Hey. A look at the time remaining in the second quarter and the score. Butch Davis's team on a 13-play, 62-yard drive, however, aided by five Arizona State penalties. So maybe when you look at it in that light, John, it's a good decision to go for three because... Uh, the offense, uh, while they have moved the ball, they've had some help. So I think uh, going for three here is probably the right call. It is the right call, especially if he makes the field goal. <laughs> it's the perfect call. Well, this is where Andy Crossland needs to be consistent. Popovich will hold just outside the 10-yard uh, line. And Andy Crossland drills through the 20-yard field goal. And with six minutes, 26 seconds left to go in the second period, we are tied at three. You gotta be happy if you're a Miami Hurricane fan getting on the scoreboard with that drive. They had nice field position, all, all set up with defense. So Miami's defense and Arizona State's defense have played well so far. The result, just two field goals. Six minutes, 26 seconds left to go second quarter here at the Orange Bowl. It's the Sun Devils three and the Hurricanes three. Second quarter, Miami equaling the game at three all on the Andy Crossland. 20-yard field goal. Let's take a look at the scoring drive for the Hurricanes. It was rather extensive. 13 plays, 62 yards, and you see almost eight minutes taken off the clock and helped out by 30 yards in Arizona State penalties. George Gaitan will kick it off for Miami into the win. Marlon Farlow and J.R. Redmond standing back close to the 10-yard line for Arizona State. So both offenses have moved the ball somewhat, but have bogged down inside the opponent's 30s and uh, have traded field goals and that's where we are right now high and short see if arizona state fair catches it they're going to let it bounce and they almost gave the football up it's still loose they may have Frank. and miami may have it they say arizona state got it back well jeff popovich again throwing his body in there but Arizona State retains possession as Marlon Farlow hopped on the loose football. Just a bad play now time by number 86, Zach Romero. He's a tight end for Arizona State. He should know better to go ahead and put his hand up and fair catch this. He lets it bounce, and luckily it bounces back to someone in a white jersey. There was a scramble for it. Popovich thought he had it, but at the end of the bottom of the pile, ASU comes up with the football. There it is, hanging loose, and Marlon Farlow got it back. Spread formation for the Sun Devils. No tight ends in. Mike Martin with the football. Martin gets a couple before Denny Fortney and company will come up and bring him down. Michael Smith also helping out. Nowhere to go that time for the ASU backfield. Either tandem could have been either Redmond or the starter Martin, and there was no running room. That time Martin takes the, the ball, and there's, he's patting himself on his shoulder saying it's my fault, but hey, you got to have some room to run the ball. It's not on all on you, number 29. Redmond replaces Martin, and Redmond has hurt the Hurricanes catching the ball coming out of the backfield. Second and eight for Arizona State at their 24. Now double tight end formation. 
Redmond with the ball, trying to get to the outside, gets away from Eugene Ridgely. Dwayne Starks has him, but first down yardage, it looks like, for J.R. Redmond. Eugene Ridgely, normally a sure tackler, had him about four yards shy of the first down, but Redmond got away, and they'll move the sticks with 5.32 left to go in the second quarter. Number 75, the right guard, Victor Leva, does a nice job coming around and then sealing off the linebacker right there. Number 58, Jeffrey Taylor gets sealed off, and then it's all number 21, J.R. Redmond, putting his head down and breaking the tackle of number 23, Dwayne Starks, actually taking Dwayne for a little bit of a ride and a first down. Miami DB's got to get their plastic down. they got to get lower. From the 33, first down. J.R. Redmond again trying to get to the outside. Flag down. Redmond still on his feet and will gain four, but this one will come back, it looks like. Rod Mack in on the tackle for Miami along with Dwayne Starks. Let's check out the flag and another hold on the Sun Devils. I'm not sure if they're calling it outside on number 83, Jackson. It looked like he was tangled up with Dennis Scott, number 25, the strong safety. He comes from the short side of the football field. There was really no running room again. It looked like the same play. If it works once, let's see Holding. if it'll work twice. Number 21 gets bounced outside. There may be some holding inside. Yeah, it was on we Michael Lawson was being held around the neck pretty much. Looked like it was the old collar and elbow from the <laughs> WWF. That's right. They've got all the moves today. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul will bring it back to the 25-yard line. And it'll be uh, first and 18 for Arizona State. Just under five minutes to go second quarter. Motion from Ricky Boyer. Keeley in the pass. Damian Lewis has him with the sack. First collegiate sack for Damian Lewis. He's done it all afternoon long. This time he gets to the quarterback, Keeley. That time no room to step up because there were orange jerseys all around the pocket area. And number 92, Lewis, as you said, gets his first sack as a hurricane. Look Coming. at Damian Lewis, number 92 again. Yeah, does a nice job. It was a screen play, and there was no time for the screen. Number 56, Kyle Murphy stayed for a couple counts and then let Lewis go, but there was nowhere to throw the football. That time, Ryan Keeley eats the ball underneath number 92, Lewis. Second. Down and a six-yard loss on the last play. Here comes Derek Ham pressuring Keeley. Keeley gets away, flings it out complete to Mitchell. Mitchell up at the 39-yard line, and again a penalty flag down. Frank, I'm not so sure if Keeley crossed the line of scrimmage before, you know, he threw that football. He may have been right at the line of scrimmage or just over the line of scrimmage. It looks like this one, if the play stood, it would go to the 38-yard line and bring up third and five. But an ineligible downfield is the caller, a legal forward pass. Yeah, he was across the line illegal of scrimmage forward pass. because the linesman threw the flag right about at the 21-yard line closest to the Miami bench. And the line of scrimmage was the 20. So Keeley had crossed it but when he threw the football. So Arizona State moving we in reverse gear right now. Pass. It'll still be second down. Five yards, spot of the foul. Loss of down. Third down. Let's take a look. He escapes number 71 Ham, and there's the line of scrimmage right there. He's just over the 20-yard line, and that'll draw a flag every time. He made a great play of eluding the pressure, getting the ball outside the Mitchell, but that'll cost him, and flags have really hurt both offenses, Frank. They've both been going backwards. One positive play, and then they get hurt by either a holder, an illegal pass, or an offside. 58 yards and penalties against the Sun Devils. That's a loss of down, so it's third down, and the running play gets about four yards as Mike Martin got it, but uh, Dan Morgan and Michael Lawson combining on the tackle hold it to a gain of four, and Arizona State, with the wind at their back, will just punt it out of there. You see number 97, Michael Lawson, and also the freshman number 44, Danny Morgan from Coral Springs, Florida, comes in with the stop. Good job that time by Lawson and Morgan, also number 58. Jeffrey Taylor Jeffrey got Taylor in there. He'd actually well. made the first contact, and then Morgan and Lawson finish it off. Williams to punt. Dwayne Starks back to receive it for Miami. Nick Ward came very close to blocking the first one. Williams gets it away and goes down. Penalty flag coming. Starks with the fair catch. And it looks like it's going to be running into the kicker. Well, I'm not sure if he was blocked into him or not, but the official threw the flag. It is running into the kicker. Let's take another look at the replay and see if we can pick it up. There were two flags actually on, on the call. This one we'll see first. Coming through, it looked like they got Ridgely. Yeah, Eugene Ridgely ran into him. Uh, Nate Brooks was blocked into him, but Eugene Ridgely ran into the kicker. Take another look at it. You'll see Nate Brooks to the left of the kicker, and then late number 29 right there goes into the kicker's legs. 
That'll draw a flag every time. There was also a hold on Miami downfield. So from a good situation for Miami, it could turn into a bit of a nightmare here. Yeah, flags have been the story of the first half so far, Frank. The offenses and defenses have really been making a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes mentally and physically. Eugene Ridgely obviously thought he had a chance to block it because he went full out at the kicker. And you don't do that straight on unless you really feel you've got the ball. He was almost at the point of no return. He had already had made up his mind he was going after the block. The kick goes above, and he really had nowhere else to go but into the kicker. Bruce uh, Snyder trying to figure this out along with the officials because I don't know that they would have an automatic first down. They're saying it would, the hold was post-possession. Right. Looks like the, uh, the kicking team's coming yeah, back out on the, the football kicker. field. Defense, that penalty's refused. Holding on the receivers. That penalty will be enforced. Ten yards from the line of scrimmage. Replay fourth down. So Arizona State will take the extra 10 yards and give Williams a little more room. Although that was a pretty good kick. Starks fair caught it at about his own 41-yard line. But uh, Bruce Snyder looking for a little more room. There's the penalty yardage. And you can see, as John said, it has certainly cost both teams. Well, 12 penalties in the game so far, and we're not at halftime yet. So I'll expect a lot more as the game wears on. Marcus Williams standing at his own 15. And Dwayne Starks back at the Miami 25 to receive the kick. 3.03 left to go second quarter. We're in a 3-3 tie. Williams gets this one away. Dwayne Starks signals fair catch and makes it and fumbles it and then falls on it at the Miami 24-yard line. So Miami will start first and 10 from their own 24. 2.55 left to play second quarter here at the Orange Bowl in Miami's home opener. It's the Canes 3 and the Sun Devils 3. He was the first head coach in football history to win both a Super Bowl title and a National Collegiate Championship. He's one of only two active coaches who've led a team to two Super Bowl titles. He's one of the NFL's most successful head coaches. He's Jimmy Johnson. And every Sunday morning, the coach of the Miami Dolphins takes the hot seat on the Jimmy Johnson Show. Get into the mind of the master every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on Sports Channel and at 11.30 a.m. on NBC6. Hey, tickets. They're not just any tickets, they're Hurricane football tickets. Do you know what that means? Well, I... It means wide open offense, swarming defense, full throttle college football at the Orange Bowl, with tailgate parties, the band of the hour, the cheerleaders, and of course, the best in the Ibis. Wow, and what a great price. We're there. But who's this Sebastian guy? Where are you going to be this hurricane season? For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. 2.55 left to go second quarter. Arizona State and Miami in a 3-3 tie. Remember, football fans, tune in tomorrow at 10 a.m. for the state's most comprehensive free game show. The undefeated Dolphins pay a visit to Lambeau Field to battle the world champion Green Bay Packers, although we don't expect it to be a frozen tundra. And the 2-0 Buccaneers head up north to try to stop Robert Smith, Chris Carter, and the Minnesota Vikings. Huddle up with Sunday Morning NFL exclusively on Sports Channel. So the decision to accept the holding penalty on Miami was a good one for Bruce Snyder as his team picked up 16 yards in field position. And Miami will start at first and 10 from their own 24. Edger and James and Nick Williams in the backfield behind Ryan Clement. 2.55 to go second quarter. We're tied at three. Only Miami's fourth possession of the game. Edger and James bounces this one outside. Edger and James turned around by Tillman. And he'll get a yard at most. The Arizona State defense swarming on top of him after that. Paul Reynolds, the middle linebacker, along with Quincy Yancey making the tackle. One thing that Arizona State is doing that maybe Edron James is not used to is when he stutter steps and goes to the outside, their team speed seems to be a little bit better than the teams he's faced in the past. And he's not getting that second and third look of where to run the football because their white shirts are catching up with them today. Last week or two weeks ago, did a great job of holding his composure and then breaking out to the outside. Today, the team speed of Arizona State really taking over. Second and nine. Curlin Blaze back in at right tackle for Miami. Clement to the outside. Caught by Reggie Wayne, and he should have a first down up at the 36-yard line of Miami. Courtney Jackson on the coverage, but Miami will move the sticks with 2.08 left to go second quarter. Yeah, 2.08, as you said, they have uh, maybe a timeout left. They have one timeout left, so they're trying to move the football down the field 
Ryan this time taking a look to his freshman wideout, number 87, Wayne. Does a nice job on the comeback pattern. Gets two feet inbounds, first down, Canes. Reggie Wayne, the freshman out of Marrero, Louisiana. True freshman. You see Ryan Clement, 6 of 8, 65 yards. But, uh, you know, neither team's really had the football much in terms of number of possessions. They've been long possessions, taking a lot of time off the clock. On first down, pressure on. Clement has a wide open receiver. Did Omar Roll come down in bounds? He did. It's a six-yard gain on first down, but a great catch by Omar Roll. Possibly the best six-yard catch in college football today by Omar Roll. Gets his right foot down. Ryan waited a little bit longer on that pattern to see Omar break out to the right side. Threw the ball up in the air, and Omar does a nice job of coming down with the football. I think Ryan wanted to push his football down the field, but had pressure. Rolls to his right side and just... Great elevation by Omar Roll. Gets his right foot down and, and a, a big gain, big six-yard gain. You don't teach that kind of athleticism. Second and four for Miami. Omar had six catches last week. Only a six-yard average. Clement over the middle, and Omar Roll can't hold on to it. Had some trouble at Baylor with a couple of drops and had that one right on the nine and couldn't hang on. We'll bring up third and four. It's funny when receivers do that. They come up with the unbelievable catch, and then they come right back and catch one dead on stride only to bobble it and miss it this time ryan has time he fights the underneath coverage does omar roll goes right around it and then comes across on the in route perfect pass but number 39 richardson there to break up the pass but it was more on omar roll than richardson well as ryan clement said this week i don't need guys to be dependable i need guys to make big plays but i think right now he'd settle for dependable on omar roll asu showing blitz a delay to Edger and James. Stutter steps in the hole and is brought down shy of a first down. And Miami will have to kick it away. A little bit of a conservative call on third and four, but you figure on a draw play, maybe Edger and James will find a crease and make it on his own. Yeah, and you see James coming off the sideline. I think that's the first time I've seen him really frustrated coming off the football field. There's no room to run. Arizona State with an athletic and speedy defense. 123 left to go second quarter. We'll be right back. That thunder you hear? It's not an afternoon Florida storm. It's Bobby Bonilla hitting homers out of the park. The pennant race heats up when the Marlins take on the Expo. Game 1, September 23rd, 7 p.m. on Sports Channel. Oh, man. You're watching the Florida Marlins. We've got a dandy here on our hands. The Marlins try to keep their winning streak alive. He struck him out. Struck him out. Marlins magic. All season on Sunshine. A minute 23 left to go second quarter. Miami and Arizona State locked up in a 3-3 tie as both defenses have so far taken the measure of the offensive units. Miami with a three and out after taking the ball over on their fourth possession. Andy Crossland with the kick. Redmond with the catch. Redmond getting away. Redmond may go. Andy Crossland is the only guy left. And Andy knocked him down at the Miami 38-yard line. Well, poor tackling by the Miami special teams. Looked like Darrell McMillan had a clean shot at him back at the ASU 37, and he got away. Yeah, he did, but a very gu a gutsy catch by J.R. Redman, a short, wobbly kick. He comes up, takes it on the dead run, makes the first man miss. And McMillan, you see Redman right here. McMillan has a shot, goes for the block, and doesn't wrap up. He's a running back, not a defensive player, so... You know, you can, you can see why he didn't wrap up and make the tackle. Andy Cross on the last line of defense for Miami makes Redmond stumble, but great field position for ASU. Only a 30-yard punt, a 37-yard return. Keeley running out of the pocket. And Keeley run down from behind by Michael Lawson, although he will pick up three yards. He'll pick up three yards, but that clock's running under a minute now with 58 seconds and counting. Bring up second and a short seven for Arizona State. 51 seconds in the clock moving. ASU does have the wind at their back if they're thinking field goal. Keeley moving in the pocket. Pass over the middle, broken up by Dennis Scott. 
Kenny Mitchell, the intended receiver, but Dennis Scott coming from behind, making a nice play. Dennis Scott comes back to the ball. Kenny Mitchell, as a receiver, should have come back to the ball. That would have been a completion. Keeley does a nice job of stepping up in the pocket. He has great calm and great presence. You see, he doesn't get rattled, doesn't tuck it either and run. He stands in tall and throws it, but 81, Kenny Mitchell waiting for the ball instead of coming back. Dennis Scott comes in, slips his left hand in front. Deflection, big play for the Hurricane defense. Third and six for Arizona State. Delay to Redmond. Redmond has some room. Redmond has a first down. Dennis Scott trying to strip the football, but cannot. And Redmond gets to the 16-yard line. 27 seconds left to go, and timeout being called as they move the sticks. Wow. You can't say enough about this sophomore running back, J.R. Redmond, just carrying Miami Hurricane defenders towards the goal line. Nice job by ASU on the draw play. You see Redmond coming out of the middle, just carrying number 25, Dennis Scott. Dennis Scott trying to strip the football, but Redmond too strong. From the 16, Keeley on the rollout. Gets away from one, being chased by Damian Lewis. To the end zone, overthrows Craig Spann along the sideline. I like this quarterback, Ryan Keeley, does a nice job of buying some time and just trying to give his receivers a chance to catch the football. Craig Spann, number two, you see, trying to go up the field after Keeley had broke containment, but a nice, a nice effort by the quarterback there. Look at Ryan Keeley, the redshirt freshman, second and 10 with 16 seconds left in the second quarter. Miami trying to hold off Arizona State after the big punt return by J.R. Redmond. 3-3 three, three the score. Three wide receivers in the formation. Keeley underneath, incomplete, was looking for Boyer on maybe a little option route. Keeley read one thing, Boyer did another. Could have happened, Frank, because Keeley immediately stepped and threw to the inside where his receiver was not. His receiver was on the outside. So a little miscommunication that time by receiver and quarterback. It'll bring up a third and 10 with only 13 seconds left to go before halftime. And I'm sure Miami's defense is thinking, let's hold them to at least a field goal, or at best a field goal try. Miami Eight. does get the second half kickoff, so they wouldn't be in bad shape. ASU with one timeout remaining with only 13 seconds left to go. Third and 10 for the Sun Devils. Jeff Hawk, the fullback, will pick up a yard on the conservative call. Robert Hall made first contact. Rod Mack and Damian Lewis finished him off, and Arizona State will spend their last time out with five seconds to go. So Bruce Snyder just moved the ball between the middle of the hash marks, and he's going to settle for the field goal attempt. Yeah, he wanted to take it out of the uh, redshirt freshman. Wanted to take it out of the redshirt freshman's hands that time, just get the ball in the middle of the football field, take his chances of going up. 6-3, just a trap play on the inside, but a nice job defensively by the Canes up the middle of the field. You see about four or five orange jerseys piling up on the fullback, Paul. So Robert Neese will come on for a field goal try uh, at the conclusion of the timeout. It'll come from approximately 33 yards away. He has made a 34-yarder today. Andy Crossland has made a 20-yarder, and that's been the only scoring. Probably something we didn't really expect to see, a defensive battle with two young defenses, but... Uh, both those units have played very, very well. Frank, I fully expected to see a lot of footballs on one-to-man -on -one coverage down the field by the Canes and a lot of running attack by ASU, but the defenses and penalties have really been the uh, telltale signs of this football game. 12 penalties in all before halftime, and, and a lot of the defensive and offensive drives have been stopped due to penalties. So Miami specialty teams unit uh, talking it over. They, of course, have blocked uh, over 20 kicks in Butch Davis's two-plus seasons here. So maybe they're talking about ways that they can spring somebody loose and get in on this one. They nearly blocked the punt in the first quarter and have also been guilty of a running into the kicker penalty. Robert Neese, 5'11", senior out of Bakersfield, California, will kick it out of the hold of the freshman quarterback, the redshirt freshman quarterback, Ryan Keeley. Ball will be spotted at 23. Good snap, good hold, kick is away. And Nice knocks it through there from 33 yards out with two seconds left to play in the first half. Arizona State has grabbed a 6-3 lead. Arizona State doing a nice job with limited time on the score clock that time, driving the football down the field. Ryan Keeley making some plays at the quarterback position, and also J.R. Redmond, he sparked it with the punt return, brings the, brings the score to 6-3 Arizona State. 
Three field goals, no touchdowns here in the first half. Bruce Snyder, as you see, a national and Pac-10 coach of the year last year after his team went 11-1. The only blemish there, the Rose Bowl loss to Arizona State. That was an eight-play drive by the Sun Devils. It covered only 22 yards, but it was enough in a minute and seven seconds to set up Robert Neese for the field goal, which has given them the lead. Well, Frank, there's only two seconds left to go before halftime, but the state of Arizona has had a lot of success against the University of Miami, especially in this Orange Bowl. The University of Arizona came uh, into uh, Miami and, and broke the streak of the Canes a couple years back, and now Arizona State giving Miami a little bit too much to handle in this first half. Trent Jones back to receive along with Jeff Popovich. Actually, John, I, if I'm correct, I think Arizona came in here and lost 8-7, to seven, but it was a, an incredible ball game. It was Washington that that's, broke that's the right. streak. But I do remember when Arizona State came in here, and that kind of put them on their way toward that desert swarm uh, the next year. They, they finished out that year in great shape, and the next year they had that terrific team out there in Tucson. And uh, then, of course, they beat Miami out there in the Fiesta Bowl uh, under Dennis Erickson, 29 to nothing. But uh, this game kind of reminiscent of that Arizona game, which ended 8-7. to seven. Marcus Williams will kick it off. This will be the final play of the first half. He's just going to squib it. But through the hands of Carlo Joseph, and Miami will just settle for falling on the football. And that'll be the end of the first half here at the Orange Bowl. 400th game in Miami history here at the OB. And at halftime, in a defensive struggle, the Arizona State Sun Devils lead the Miami Hurricanes by a score of 6-3. to three. We'll be back with our halftime interviews and stats right after this. It. There's been a lot of successful offensive plays for Miami in the first half, but it seemed like most of them were brought back due to penalties. And the last time Miami has come back from a halftime deficit was the final game of the 95 season against Syracuse. This is Jeff Popovich at the 15. Stumbles, gets one block. Popovich up across the 35-yard line. Good return up to the 37. Jason Simmons with the tackle, so Miami has pretty good field position to start the third quarter. Yeah, this kid, number 33, Jeff Popovich, makes big plays when he gets his hands on the football, does a nice job of just taking what was there and brings it across the 35 to the 37-yard line. That's where Miami will set up shop on offense with number 16, Clement, at the helm. Well, John, I think I'd like to see Miami try the tight end a little more. It seems like that's an option that uh, almost always is available to them. They only threw to the tight end once in the first half. Dyrell McMillan, the lone running back. He played the first quarter, played well, gave way to Edron James in the second. McMillan spins away from one. McMillan trying to get around Courtney Jackson and cannot. Jackson drags him down. No gain on the play. It doesn't matter if it's number 28, McMillan, or number five, James. This ASU defense is catching up with the team with team speed on both of the Miami backs. Really nowhere to run to the off-right tackle. They try a sprint draw out to the right side. You see Ryan try to stretch the defense, give the deep handoff to McMillan, but nothing doing there. Reverses field with the spin move and just runs into more white jerseys. Number 23, Jackson, the first to meet him. Uh, no gain on the play, Frank. Second and 10 for the Hurricanes. Great draw. Clement flips it out to Daryl McMillan with some open spaces. McMillan to the 45. McMillan to the Arizona State 35 and run out by Courtney Jackson at the 33-yard line. Motion from Magic Benton. Edger and James with a flag down went nowhere. Rick Reynolds, the middle linebacker, had him, but it looked like Jeremy Stott might have been in the neutral zone once again when the football was snapped. Yeah, just another flag on that defensive uh, line for Arizona State, it looked like. You called it number 92. Stott could, be, could have been in the neutral zone. That'll cost them another five yards to tack on to the eight penalties they've had in the first half. Watch number 92. There he is in the neutral zone, and the football is snapped by Mike Wehner. So Jeremy Stott called for his third encroachment penalty. ASU playing a tough defensive football game, but sooner or later, these penalties on defense are going to catch up to them and give Miami an extra opportunity to move the football down the field for a big play on this pressure defense. Ninth penalty for 54 yards against Arizona State. 64 yards, excuse me. First and five for the Hurricanes at the ASU 28. Ryan Clements, that's Edger and James out on the flank. Quick three-step drop, pass to James is complete going to be stopped shy of a first down. First hit by Richardson, the safety. Pick up a four. We'll bring up about a third and one, depending on the spot. Little different offensive set, moving Edron James out to the wide receiver position. Ryan hits him with a quick, short three-step pass, a little, little hitch pass out to the right side. Edron does a nice job 
pushing the defender downfield, a perfect throw, and then trying to get what he can, but a lot of a lot of different white jerseys taking aim at that number five. Well, certainly, they Arizona State watched the game tapes against Baylor, and they said, we got to stop this guy. Hit him and hit him hard. Darrell McMillan back in the game on a third and one from the Arizona State 24. Chris Jones in motion. Give to McMillan. McMillan has a first down, and McMillan stacked up inside the 30-yard line. Richardson on the tackle as Robert Sampson and Mitchell Friedman got into a little shoving match. But Miami will move the sticks with 12.47 left to go third quarter. On that particular play, number 28 looked like number five of two weeks ago. Great patience in the offensive backfield. Nothing there initially, but he just slides out to the outside, then a quick cut up the middle of the football field. That gets him enough room to make the first down, Frank. Nice patience shown by number 28, Dyrell McMillan. First down for the Canes at the Arizona State 19. Module Fulcher in motion. Counter play to McMillan. Tripped up from behind. Beautiful defensive play by Aubrey Battle, and it's a loss of a yard. First time we've called Aubrey Battle's name in the football game, but he pursues, shows his speed. He's 6'3", 289, and he got down that defensive front in a hurry. Does a nice job of tracking Dyrell from behind. He was pursuing from the backside. Really, the backside has been hurting Miami. There's no blocking uh, from the point of uh, attack from for uh, Miami. Everybody's coming from behind to catch the ball carrier. We were talking in the break how the quick traps and the quick openers were working for the Canes, but any kind of counteraction, Arizona State seems to be running down. Second and 11 for Miami. Clement under some pressure. Clement fires down the middle, incomplete, short of his receiver, Omar Roll. That time, Ryan had Omar Roll early and didn't, didn't find him down the field on the post pattern. Omar did a great job of setting up the cornerback, number 23, Courtney Jackson, but Ryan didn't find him off the left-hand side of the screen. When he went back to find him, there was uh, pressure in his face, had to elude the first guy, and then didn't throw a strike. Pressure coming from Jeremy Stott, although uh, Carlo Joseph did a good job picking him up eventually. Ryan, 9 out of 14. UM 1 of 5 on third down conversions today. So a big play here early in the third quarter. Here comes the fade pattern, Frank. Clement under a rush, and down he goes. Number 92, Jeremy Stott who has had three offside penalties, redeems himself with the sack there, and that may push Miami back out of field goal range, although the field goal team is coming on the field. It'll make it a much longer attempt. Well, that's the one thing you don't want to do. What? One of the two things. You don't want to take a sack or turn the football over when you've got it in field goal range. That time, Ryan trying to make a play, but gets caught from behind. Number 92, Stott on the play. That time, times up the snap perfectly. Didn't go offside. and makes a nice play for the Arizona defense. So from just a shade over 50 yards and the wind uh, kind of at his back, Andy Crossland will attempt his third field goal of the day. Snap is good, hold is good. Crossland has enough, it's good. Andy Crossland with a 50 yard field goal and with 10.59 left to go in the third quarter, it is 6-6, Hurricane down on the field. It is Robert Sampson, we'll check out the injury when we return after this timeout from the Orange Bowl. It's the end of the model year at the Nissan store, and the cars are disappearing fast. It's got to be the model year-end deals available on every new 97 Nissan, right? Like $2,000 cash back or 2.9% APR financing for 60 months on the Nissan truck, Sentra, and 200SX. It's Nissan's model year-end clearance. The answers are out there, and they're only at your local Nissan store. Hey, Heineken's giving away season tickets to one of Florida's NFL teams. No. Yeah, get this. I went down to my local participating Heineken retailer, checked out the contest display, snagged an entry form, and now all I gotta do is watch Sunday morning NFL on Sports Channel, and I can win tickets to an upcoming game. No. Yeah, and get this. If my team runs back the opening or halftime kickoff, I win season tickets for 1998. No. Yeah. Hey, you want a Heineken? Yeah. See your local participating Heineken retailer for contest rules and regulations. 
There's a new team in Florida. Sports Channel Florida and CNNSI are joining forces to bring you the most complete sports coverage available. Sports Channel's full schedule of live professional and amateur Florida sports combined with CNNSI's sports news coverage create the perfect complement for you, the Florida sports fan. A leader in Florida sports is now offering the world of sports through CNNSI, the sports news network. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. A career best tying 50-yard field goal from Andy Crossland has pulled the Hurricanes into a 6-6 tie with Arizona State with 10:59 left to go in the third quarter. Short turnaround, Hurricane fans. You can catch the Hurricanes Friday night at 7 p.m. when they take on the Pittsburgh Panthers at Pitt Stadium. If you can't see it on Friday night, don't despair. You can catch it again Saturday night at 11:30 p.m. in the Canes' regular scheduled time slot. Let's take a look at the scoring drive for the Hurricanes. They moved it 30 yards in eight plays, consuming four minutes plus one second. And Andy Crossland with, as I said, a career best tying 50 yard field goal. Take a look at Art Kehoe on the sideline, Frank, trying to get stressed to his offensive lineman. The backside pursuit is really killing the Miami running game. The point of attack, there's nowhere to go, and the backside running game has really been killing the University of Miami. The defenders from ASU have been getting down and making the uh, Miami running back go nowhere. Again, the short kickoff from Guy Tan, and Redmond comes across the 40 yard line. Number 19, Tavokius Bonner in on the special teams tackle for Miami. Well, I don't know if they're intentionally trying to keep it away from Redmond, but uh, the high and short kick maybe trying to force the fair catch, but that time Arizona State played it a lot better than they did in the first half. Yeah, no fair catch that time. Redmond does a nice job two weeks ago against New Mexico State. He had two for 28 yards. His long uh, in that game was 36. Look at Ryan Keeley, the redshirt freshman quarterback, as he brings his offense onto the field. and. Good field position at the 42. He looked the numbers from the first half and Ryan Keeley. Mike Martin and Jeff Polk set behind him in the eye. And Martin with the football. Martin up across the 40. Lost his helmet and maybe the football. Second down. They say Arizona State got it back. And indeed, uh, Mike Martin took a shot from Dennis Scott and from Rod Mack. You want to talk about a wake-up call. Number 25, Dennis Scott. He's only six foot, 199 pounds. He's a senior strong safety. He doesn't play a strong safety position for nothing. Comes up and delivers a terrific form tackle right up through the chin of Mike Martin, the senior running back for ASU. They said the football came loose after Martin was down. He gained four, second down. Quick three-step drop, Keeley to Kenny Mitchell. Mitchell stood up by Dwayne Starks, and then Jeff Taylor comes in to help out. But it should be enough for a first down at the Miami 47. Three-step drop again, much like Baylor did two weeks ago. Just a quick hitch pass outside against Dwayne Starks. Number 81, Kenny Mitchell, this time hanging on to the football. Two weeks ago had one catch for 23 yards. He's made a couple catches today, but Keeley did a nice job of directing this offense. I really think that the offensive scheme of Arizona State in the first half trying to attack Miami in the middle, now spreading it out a little bit. Double tight end for Arizona State. Ball to Miami 47. Martin again. Martin gets about three. Damian Lewis and Michael Lawson on the tackle. And getting up off the bottom of the pile, it's uh, Michael Smith, the outside linebacker. Yeah, Michael Smith coming from the outside linebacker position number 59. Also getting help up front by number 97, Michael Lawson. Michael Lawson looked like he went for a little bit of a ride but held the running back to a gain of four yards. 9-18 left to go third quarter. We're tied at 6-6. Two field goals for each team. Second and six for Arizona State. Again, the double tight end. He's trying to pound it at the Kings. Popped the fullback, and Denny Fortney stood him up. But we had whistles and a flag down, and I believe there was no play. Looked like early movement against ASU again. This would be the tenth penalty against Arizona State, if that indeed is the call. Is Coach Snyder ru rubbing his head a little bit on the sidelines with all these penalties, Frank? Encroachment. Offense. Five yards. Replay second down. So that'll move it uh, back five. There was no play. They blew the whistle, blew the play dead. And it'll be second and 11 as the ball moved back between the Miami 48 and 49 yard line. Tenth penalty, as you see, against the Sun Devils. Miami's been called for four, but a couple of those have been costly. Here's Redmond. Trying to bounce to the outside. Redmond with Jeffrey Taylor hanging on. Gets to the 40-yard line and again a flag down. 
gain of about nine if the play stands, but it's going to be holding against Arizona State. Yeah, another penalty costing a big play to come back. Redman, a strong running back, 6'1", 208. And you see Coach Snyder with hands on his hips. He's just has to be disappointed in the play on both sides just with the penalties. They're giving great effort, but the penalties, mental penalties, have been costly. Flag dropped at the Miami 49-yard line. And they'll move it back 10. Offense, 10 yards, spotted a foul. Replay second down. So that moves it back to the ASU 41-yard line, and it is still second down. 8.46 left to go, third quarter. 6-6 six, six tie here in the Orange Bowl. Second and 22. Three wide receivers in the formation. Look for that outside screen. It worked well in this situation early in the first quarter. Healy, under some pressure. Finds his man, Span, short gain as uh, Jeffrey Taylor hauls him down at the 47-yard line of Arizona State, a pickup of six. Just a terrific throw that time by Ryan Kelly. Watch the position of this football to Span. Looked like uh, a pitcher going, painting the black on the outside. Just a perfect throw. Only the receiver could catch it or it'd be an incomplete pass. And Nate Webster, you see number 52 on the stop for the Canes. But that almost looked like a Maddox fastball outside and low. <laughs> Tough pitch to hit. Third down and 15 for Arizona State. We need to get it approximately to the Miami 37 for a first down. Redmond, the lone running back. Ricky Boyer in motion. Under some pressure, Keeley delivers complete. Craig Spann gets away from one. Dwayne Starks gets him at the Miami 42. He's about five yards shy of a first down. Miami doing a nice job that time, giving the underneath... Uh, Receivers a little bit of room, not getting them enough yardage to get down to the first down markers, and that'll bring on the punt team for ASU. But you get a good pitcher, a good shot of the Miami defense, really doing a nice job. The linebackers get back to some depth where they can keep the receiver in front of them, and then they swarm to the football. You see right there, 58, Jeffrey Taylor, along with number three, Nick Ward, and they hold ASU short of the first down. Credit Ward and not Starks with the tackle. That'll bring on Williams, the punter. Marcus Williams with Dwayne Starks back at the Miami 10. Miami jump, that may cost him a first down. Starks will let it roll and it will reach the end zone, but uh, Miami jumped offside and that could be a critical penalty. Miami only has four penalties, but none could be costlier than this one. That may give him an automatic first down or, or at least give Coach Snyder something to think about because it will be fourth and a couple inches. It is offside against the Canes. Looks and really, like there, there's, no, there's absolutely no reason for this. It looked like Denny Fortney on the outside. I'm not sure if it was Denny because, we, yeah, it was. It was 99. Denny Fortney on the outside uh, lined up at the end position. Looked like uh, just, just tried to guess the snap count. But, but John, there's, there's no reason to jump offside. You're not trying to block the kick. They only had four guys on the line of scrimmage. They were playing it very loose. Yeah, you're exactly right. Outside. Defense. Five-yard penalty. The penalty will result in the first down. So it does cause Miami a first down in possession of the football. And it puts a bad tired, mistake by Denny Fortney. It puts a tired defense back on that football field. There's a, there's only they only had four guys lined up on the line of scrimmage. They're obviously not going after the kick. So there's absolutely no reason to try and anticipate the snap count. Yeah, you're right, it, Frank. There's no excuse for that. Now Denny has to put that play behind him and come up with a big play defensively. He knows it's him. He's pointing to him. You know, he's a senior. He's a guy that leads by example. That time. Uh, just something he knows he shouldn't have done. Now he has to come back, forget about it, and make a big play. Redmond, the lone running back, play fake. Keeley going to go deep, looking for Mitchell. Dwayne Starks with the interception. Dwayne Starks at the Miami 20. Dwayne Starks looking for room, gets it up across the Miami 30-yard line. Dwayne Starks played it perfectly. In fact, might have even baited Keeley into throwing that one. Yeah, it was a blitz. The middle of the field was open, and Denny Fortney should go hug number 23, Dwayne Starks, because he got him out of a hole. Just a great timing by this athletic cornerback from the University of Miami. Ryan Keeley needed to put that football a little bit deeper in the end zone. He didn't, and Dwayne Stark cuts it back up the field. Big interception from Miami. Couldn't have happened at a better time because the, the crowd was getting out of it. They were a little tired. The defense was definitely tired. You see if the ball's a little bit underthrown, but that doesn't matter because Dwayne Starks had perfect coverage on the play. Big play for the Hurricane defense. And also remember that the wind is blowing against Ryan Keeley, and maybe the freshman didn't uh, give, give that the little extra that it needed. 
you, if anything, you want to overthrow that ball. Yeah, if you want to make a mistake, you err on the side of overthrow. Yeah, there's no deep coverage there. Miami was coming out, and Dwayne was the only person between ASU and the end zone. Dwayne, the 28-yard reception return, did a nice job last week or two weeks ago in their opener, comes up with a huge play for Miami to get the crowd and his offensive team back on the football field. 6.41 left to go, third quarter. We're tied at six. A crowd of, oh, probably 50,000 here at the Orange Bowl. Certainly for a game like this, uh, a few years ago, this place would be packed, but Miami lost three home games last year. Some of the, the local enthusiasm, uh, I'll say, has gone out of it, but the Miami players have to generate their own excitement and really get pumped and because they're in a dogfight with Arizona State. You can kick off your Sunday mornings with the state's most comprehensive pregame show. AutoNation USA presents Sunday Morning NFL. Join the team on Sports Channel every Sunday from 10 to 1130 a.m. when we take you inside the huddle of the Bucks, the Dolphins, and the Jaguars. The NFL, Florida style, exclusively on Sports Channel. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Sports Channel from the Orange Bowl where the Canes and the Arizona State Sun Devils are engaging in a knockdown, dragout defensive battle. That is the second turnover Miami's young defense has forced, and their first interception of the year couldn't have come at a better time. Could not have come at a better time. ASU was gaining some momentum. They got a big play by a penalty on Denny Fortney that gave them the football back. The first down play resulted in an interception by Dwayne Starks. Now that Miami offense that I felt like they would have to come up with some big plays down the field, man-on-man, one-on-one on the outside receivers, that hasn't happened so far, and if it has, it's been called back due to a penalty, Frank. And as you said, maybe get the tight end into the football game a little bit. They've gone with the two tight end set a little bit. It was successful two weeks ago. It was successful last season for Ryan Clement. Almost a, a, a sure thing to go to the tight end. Well, they haven't gone to him at all today. Let's see if they go to him here in the third quarter. Just one throw to Chris Jones in the first half. That's the only catch by a tight end, and really he hasn't looked for Fulcher or Frank. Edger and James in at running back. Double tight end for the Canes. Franks and Jones. Under some pressure, Clements swings it out to Edger and James. James gets away from the man at the 30. Edger at the 40. Edger at the Miami 46-yard line before he is dragged down. A pickup of 15 yards. I like the way Miami stretched the offense that time. They had two, def two tight ends in. Made them all get in beside the box. The ASU defenders, there was about eight or nine guys on the line of scrimmage. They used motion by number one, Daryl Jones, and then they sprung the back outside. Edron James, a little flip pass outside, gets outside the linebacker, number 37, Paul Reynolds, breaks his tackle, then cuts it back upfield. And on the play, number 23, Courtney Jackson of ASU, went down on an injury. It looks like there's another player down, Aubrey Battle, number 97 for ASU. Damian Richardson made the first contact. Battle got a piece of the tackle, and it's Battle who is still on the Orange Bowl turf, but as you see now getting up, and uh, he'll jog it off. Miami with a first down at the 46-yard line. Gain of 15 on the last play. And Miami. Miami with a first down at their 46. John, uh, kind of a critical time of the ball game here. 6.38 to go third quarter. And Miami with the wind at their back. This is uh, maybe the opportunity you'd like to see them move it down. Yeah, you got to put a score on the board here with 6-6 with 6.33 and counting left to go in the third quarter. Again, Miami double tight end to the bottom part of your screen. Now Jones in motion. Looks like Stott jumped again. Pitch to James. Flags down. James trying to get outside. He is wrapped up and will pick up only about a yard or two as Arizona State's uh, Jawan Cherry lost his helmet, but let's check out the penalty flag. And again, Arizona State in the neutral zone. Do you think when Jeremy was a young kid, his mom had to tell him twice, don't do that, don't jump off sides because he's been doing it three or four times today. Just can't hold his water Offside. and has to show more patience. Defense, five yards. Replay first down. Jeremy Stotts violated the neutral zone more than the Romulans in Star Trek. <laughs> I tell you what, he's he's been going on every... Ryan's doing a great job with his cadence. He's doing a nice job of holding his cadence and then going on the first down, really keeping that defensive front of ASU off, off guard. 12th penalty against Arizona State, 85 yards. Six minutes, two seconds on the clock moving here in the third quarter. Miami now with first and five, just inside ASU territory. Delay, give to Edger and James. James tries to get to the outside and does. Edger and James across the 40 and at the Arizona State 30-yard line. Stephen Trejo, the redshirt freshman linebacker, finally ran him down, but a nice pickup of 14 yards for Edger and James. Good job that time. Individual effort by number five, James. Really made one man miss on the outside. Miami doing a nice job inside, washing the defensive 
players down, interior, interior defensive players down of ASU, and then Edron James on the corner does a nice job of eluding a tackle and picking up another first down, getting the ball down to the ASU 35-yard line. Well, Edron James was held to uh, 17 yards on 10 first-half carries, so maybe he's heating up. Certainly that's what Miami would want to see. Again, it looked like the Sun Devils jumped the pass to Omar Roll, incomplete. Juwan Cherry got a hand in there to break it up. No flags down, although it looked like ASU might have jumped. They may have missed one there. It looked like another ASU defensive lineman, Ryan Reilly, number 95 in the ball game. We can take a look at it, the bottom right of your screen. You'll see him jump right there, number 95. Looked like he was in the neutral zone. No flag on the play, though. So incomplete pass brings up a second and 10 for the Canes. Really, the most dependable receiver Miami's had today has been the true freshman, Reggie Wayne. Done a nice job on the outside, number 87 on the comeback routes. Done a great job. Right now, Magic Benton and Daryl Jones are the wide receivers as Edger and James splits to the lower part of the formation. And Clement looking that way. Pump fakes and now goes for Edger and just off his fingertips at the 15-yard line. Well, they set up that play in the first half with the short throw about four yards downfield. That time, John, the pump fake and go. Yeah, if I'd have went with my instincts, I would have called it too. I was thinking that in my head when I saw Ryan bring him out to the outside. They've already run it once in the first half. Try the, for the home run now in the closer to the red zone and just maybe a yard too much for Edron James. A receiver may have come down with that to, to, to dive for the football. Edron tried to keep his feet. Maybe that kept him away from a touchdown. I'm sure he was thinking six because if he catches the ball, he goes. Third and ten for the Hurricanes. 540 left to go third quarter. Safety Brown creeps up and now backs off. Here comes the blitz from the outside. James picks it up. Clement down the middle behind Omar Roll, and Jason Simmons knocked it away. That was not a good throw by Ryan Clement because Roll was open and had to slow down for the ball. I think Ryan's having a little bit of difficulty today because they're showing him blitz. He wants to go outside, and at the snap of the ball, they're backing out of it, and he's not properly getting his feet set to go to his second or third receiver again. He's just staying and, and trying to lock in on somebody. That time a throw behind the receiver, Omar Roll, but he'll get it going again. He's still got a quarter and a half to get it going. Andy Crossland to punt, standing at the 50, going for the near side coffin corner. And he knocked it into the end zone. Just missed that corner. So it'll come out to the 20 on the touchback with 527 left to go in the third period. It's Arizona State 6 and Miami 6. John, that was... Uh, Good opportunity for Miami. They had first and 10 at the 30, but the incompletion and the bare overthrow to Edger and James, and that may be a play Miami looks back on. Yeah, that's the big play that was, was missed by the Miami offense. Dwayne Starks gets the interception and gets the momentum going back on the University of Miami sideline, gets a little bit of excitement going, and they miss a golden opportunity to Edger and James on the pump and go outside, just overthrowing him on the sidelines, which would have been a sure touchdown. First and 10 for Arizona State at their own 20. Mike Martin and Jeff Falk, the running backs. This is Martin. Martin finds a hole. Martin to the outside, and he's going to pick up nine. Almost has first down yardage as Dwayne Starks made the tackle. Nice blocking up front by that ASU offensive line. They've had some time to rest on the offensive sideline. You see the handoff deep in the backfield to the senior running back, Martin. But there's really no orange jerseys in the way. Every white jersey was on an orange jersey. You see the outside receiver getting a block on number 58, Jeffrey Taylor. He's not able to get to the football carrier. It's a it's a 10-yard gain and a, and, or a nine-yard gain close to a first down. Just a couple of inches for a first. Martin will have the first down, although he doesn't get much more. As Derek Ham and Denny Fortney and Nate Webster all combined to bring him down. And it looks like Nate Webster, number 52, is down for the hurricane. Nate getting the call in the last couple series for the Hurricane defense. Played a nice, did a nice job two weeks ago against Baylor, forcing the fumble. Uh, Jeff Popovich going for a touchdown, but let's hope he's all right. Cliff Jackson coming into the game, so I'm wondering if there's something amiss uh, with Rod Matt. Yeah, Rod, Rod played the entire first half, and I don't see him on the sideline right now. Yeah, he, he is on the sideline, but he's not getting into the football game. So as they tend to Nate Webster, I saw Cliff Jackson run on the field, and he is in at middle linebacker. There is a timeout on the field with four minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter. As you take a look at uh, Nate Webster out of Miami Northwestern High School, one of the most highly recruited players in the country, and Nate looks like he just uh, got his bell rung. Yeah, I don't think Nate Nate knows where he's at right now. or He's in a lot of pain. Could be a shoulder as well. He's kind of favoring that left shoulder. 
and they're going to take him straight into the locker room. Miami very inexperienced at that linebacker position, and they, they're using it by a lot of bodies by committee. They have a lot of young guys in there, some freshmen even. Dan Morgan's in there, at, at sometimes at the will linebacker for Michael Smith. Rod Mack, there must be an injury at the middle linebacking position. Now Nate Webster goes out, and that brings on Cliff Jackson. You see Mack on the sidelines. He looks good from here, but there's a reason he's not in that football game, and they go to number 49, Cliff Jackson. Well, from the way they were holding Nate Webster's arm, it certainly looked like a possible shoulder separation or maybe something around the collarbone, but they were holding that left arm out extended. They may have to pop that baby back in. That's not fun. No, it's not. not. No, it's not. That one's done. It's a first down for Arizona State at their own 32-yard line. Four minutes, 50 seconds left to go in the third quarter. We are in a tight one, 6-6. Here at the Orange Bowl, a couple of field goals for Arizona State's Robert Neese, a couple of field goals from Miami's Andy Crossland. John, I figured this to be a tough game. I just didn't figure to be all field goals. Yeah, you didn't think it would be 6-6. You thought with the way ASU played defense, there'd be a lot of big play opportunities for the Canes. It seems like the defense is going to have to make another play to shorten the field for the offense. They've gone 60 yards, but they've started on their own 20 when they've done that, Nate have cashed in only on field goals. And you see Butch Davis trying to encourage his defense to stay in there and hang in and get the ball back for the offense. You know, when you're an offensive player, you just think it's going to take one more touch of the football and you'll get it done. But you can't do it without a reliable defense. And you're looking at a bunch right now that needs to come up with another big play. Well, they played very well so far in this game for being as young as they are. Miami's offense just missing a couple of times. The, the pass to Edger and James on the last possession had touchdown written all over it, but Ryan got a little too much air under the football and just off Edger and fingers. First and 10 for Arizona State. J.R. Redmond and Jeff Hawk set behind Ryan Keeley. Redmond. Denny Fortney and Jeffrey Taylor have him after a gain of three. Kind of like the running of, of J.R. Redmond. Very tough and very aggressive. Reminds me of of Edger and James a little bit. He, he, when he gets in the open field, he, he's got that second gear, but when he's in tight, he's really got a lot of power and a lot of ability, and he's only a sophomore. He last two weeks ago, 176 yards and a, and a touchdown. He had a long of 93 yards, so he's got the speed to take it to the house. Rod Mack back in at middle linebacker for the Hurricanes. On second and seven, Keeley, three-step drop. Passing to the outside and overthrows his intended receiver, Kenny Mitchell as Dwayne Starks had uh, very good coverage. You're not going to have too much luck going against Dwayne Starks uh, speed for speed. They tried at that time on the fade route. Kenny Mitchell really had no room to work with. Dwayne did a great job of turning his hips and forcing him to the sideline, making it a tough throw for Ryan Keeley to fit one in there. And he did a good job of overthrowing him because had it not been overthrown, it would have been up for grabs. Third down and eight. J.R. Redmond, the only running back. Miami with two sacks today. They'd love to get a third right here. Look for ASU to go over the middle. That's where they've been successful. Keeley steps up in the pocket. Pass is complete to Mitchell, and Mitchell has a first down at the Arizona State 48-yard line. Again, using the middle of the football field with their wideouts, doing a nice job with their motion, trying to confuse the young linebacking core of Miami. They get inside the box. Keeley, these are easy throws for quarterbacks. They're looking right down the middle of the football field. The linemen really give him a great vision, a great line to throw the football, and then a big catch by Mitchell. The ball was delivered behind him. Great concentration in the middle of the football field. Michael Smith made the tackle for the Canes, but the Sun Devils with a first down at their own 48. Redmond pops it up through left guard and picks up about four into Hurricane territory. Michael Smith again in on the tackle for the Canes. The way Arizona's going about running their offense, it looks like they're trying to use a big, long scoring drive to put one score up on the board and depend on their defense because right now they're trying to wear down Miami on first down. They're going with two tight ends and just blowing them off the line of scrimmage for five and six yards at a clip on first down. They're pinching, they're, they're throwing in a little running uh, outside, but more passing over the middle to complement that running. Three minutes to go, third quarter. Second and five for Arizona State. Redmond. Stutter stepping in the hole, and he's held to a gain of about a yard or so. Damian Lewis stepping up to stop that play. Good job that time by Miami, and, and Lewis, number 92, the freshman, he's been stellar all afternoon, comes up with another play for that team defense. Call it a gain of two. It'll bring up a third and about three. This time Arizona State trying to move people around the middle of that Miami defense. 
You see 92 coming off of a block. That's great pursuit, great, great determination by that young defensive tackle, Lewis. Michael Watson, the other defensive tackle, also helping out after Lewis made the first contact. Third and a long three for Arizona State. Double tight end. Keeley over the middle, complete. Zirconi. Matt Zirconi has it down by the Miami 20-yard line before he is run out of bounds by Dennis Scott. Excuse me, Kendrick Bates on the catch. Kendrick Bates made the catch, and that's a big first down for Arizona State. They had this play early in the first quarter. They come back to it in a key situation. Bates goes in motion from left to right. You'll see number 51, Rod Mack. He cuts underneath the linebacker right there. You see him. Rod Mack's about 10 yards deep. Number 85, Bates only goes about four or five yards across the middle, goes underneath the coverage, untouched. No linebacker for the Canes put a, put a hand on him. Keeley finds him, sets in the pocket, and he knows, yeah, that's a big play. 28-yard gain on a third and three. And now the officials will reset the play clock with 2.05 left to go in the third quarter. Six to six, Arizona State here in the Orange Bowl, along with the Hurricanes. It's been tight all the way, tough defensive battle. Arizona State now in the red zone. It's an 18 of Miami. Redmond dropped and drilled. Wow. A huge hit by Damian Lewis. I think there's a, a young freshman turning into a senior or, or a man out there for the defensive front for the Canes. That's number 92. Damian Lewis does a great job of just getting rid of the, le of the left guard for ASU and then delivering a great tackle, punishing the running back. You see him at the middle of your screen. Just slips around the center, left part, number 64, and then puts number 21, Redmond, to, on his back. Mike Martin in a tailback for Arizona State. Loss of one on the last play. Pitch to Martin, trying to get around the end. And Michael Smith, along with Nick Ward, hold him to a gain of about three. Miami showing some team speed of their own that time, stretching that toss play to the short side of the field, limiting the, the backs, Martin of ASU, to a minimal gain of three yards. But you see here, Miami just using some speed on the outside. Ham holding his own and then get some help from the free safety position from Eugene Ridgely, number 29. It was Ridgely 29, not Michael Smith 59, that made the play. And Nick Ward, uh, you're looking at number three, helping out. Third and about nine for Arizona State. Martin in the backfield. Boyer in motion. Keeley will put it up. Keeley to the outside complete, and this is going to be an Arizona State touchdown to Ricky Boyer. What a great play. They did the same thing without the tight end. This time they bring the wide receiver in motion and bring him across the formation. Miami has yet, they're over three and picking up the receiver coming underneath the linebackers, and I can't understand why they're not getting on him. They cannot find the third receiver. A great play call by Arizona State. You see the top of the screen, the tight end clears out going straight down the field. Now here comes the wide receiver underneath and a great throw by Keeley. He's looking downfield at his tight end, then all of a sudden snaps the throw outside to number 24, Ricky Boyer for the ASU score. Extra point attempt upcoming from Robert Neese and Ricky Boyer at 5'8", 156, you know has a speed advantage he on Jeffrey fly. Taylor. It was just a mismatch, Frank. Conversion attempt is good, and with 118 left to go in the third quarter, Arizona State has put the first touchdown of the day on the board. They lead the Hurricanes 13 to 6. Watch Keeley look downfield, and then all of a sudden snap the throw to his outside. Bam! He gets it outside, and there's no, not a chance for Jeffrey Taylor to react that quick on a on a fleet-footed receiver, 5'8", 156 pounds. Boyer just in a mismatch. Arizona State's coaching staff did a great job of getting one-on-one -on -one coverage with a linebacker on a receiver. So Arizona State has jumped on top 13 to 6. And uh, John, you got to wonder, they haven't come after Ryan Keeley in the second half. They've been sitting back in the zones and not really blitzing. And uh, Keeley has been getting time from his offensive line to just against the four-man rush. Well, you remember in the first half, Frank, they did get pressure, but it was with the front four, no linebacker help. Now that Miami defense has been on the field a little bit longer in this second half, maybe they're wearing down and with the linebackers, having a day of it just trying to get a hold of those receivers on, of ASU over the middle of the field. They're having a tough time trying to adjust personnel-wise on defense against this ASU offense. A minute 18 to go, third quarter. Arizona State with an 11-play, 80-yard drive. They took 4.09 off the clock. So an impressive drive from the Sun Devils, culminating in the uh, Ricky Boyer touchdown catch from Ryan Keeley. You talk about a big stand that Miami needed to make. 
there. They let up the touchdown. Now this offense has to come out with a minute 18 left to go in the third quarter, down by a touchdown. They, they have, they're going with the win now, but in the fourth quarter, they'll be against that win. So they need to put, get some good field position here, try to stick it in the end zone. And a couple of big third down conversions by Arizona State on that drive as well. Nice will kick off. Jeff Popovich has to run up and get on the football, and I don't know if he did. I think he got, I retained the football, Frank. At the 21 yard line, that kick hanging up in the wind. And Miami will take it first and 10 at their own 21. We don't feel it much up here, the wind, but down in field level, must be creating habit with those kicks, especially the kickoffs. That's the second one that's really hung up in the air. The first one in Miami's advantage when they had the kickoff, this time almost created a, creating a turnover for the Kings. Well, it's a big offensive series for Miami. They need to move the football, and they need to get on the board with 110 left to go in the third quarter. They're down 13 to 6. It's certainly not out of range yet. Well, it's time for number 16 to start taking control of this football game. You see he has great completion percentage. 10 of 18, but he needs to make some big plays and th those penalties have been killing him and there's another flag in the backfield. Let's check out the call. We have an illegal substitution breaking the huddle with 12 men 5 yard penalty against the offense. And you can see the look on Butch Davis's face there. You know, that's a, that's a mistake on the sideline by the player involved and by, by one of the assistant coaches. Well, they had a formation called and Someone must not have got the word that they weren't out of they were out of the ball game. You can't do that, and that's that's not a good way to start this drive when they need to answer the ASU touchdown. So it's first and 15 right away. A, a negative for the Canes on this possession. McMillan on the delay, got away from one, will not get away from the rest of the Sun Devil defense, and a penalty flag down as well. Up front, this Miami offense looks very sluggish, and it looks like Dyrell McMillan is down on the carpet again, and that shoulder must be giving him a lot of trouble. Pat Tillman and company in on the tackle. And you see McMillan getting slowly to his feet. And we'll check out the penalty marker it's against Miami, because they're talking to uh, Arizona State, Paul Reynolds, middle linebacker. I don't believe you'll see Dyrell McMillan in this football game any longer. He's played as long as he possibly can. Now it's uh, Edron James' turn to take oh, over. Offense. Penalty refused. Results of the play, second down. Well, the run resulted in uh, a loss of about a yard, so they'll take the play. And Dyrell trying to go off left tackle. Number 92, Stott, the first to hit him, and then a host of white jerseys coming to take down Dyrell McMillan, and that's a lot of pressure on that young man. Aubrey Battle in on that tackle. Second down for Miami. Clement under pressure from Battle. Clement throws it up the sideline, caught by Mondral Fulcher, but they say he was out of bounds. No catch. Get word, uh, Nate Webster has a dislocated left elbow, and he will not return today on the Miami defense. Yeah, it looked like he was in a lot of pain going to the Miami dressing room, and. Uh, on that particular play, Fulcher trying to keep a foot in and drag a foot. Ryan did a nice job of delivering the football, and that's only the second time they've gone to a tight end uh, today, and that was successful. The, he was open. They just need to keep him in bounds. 51 seconds left to go third quarter. Arizona State up by a touchdown, and Miami facing a third and 15. Edger and James, Carlo Joseph in the backfield. Ryan will load it up and go deep. And almost intercepted. Good coverage from Courtney Jackson on Magic Benton. Great position by number 23, Jackson. And these Miami wide receivers don't look like they're attacking the football. Ryan's trying to put it up for grabs down there to give him a chance to make a play. And really, that ball was overthrown. He didn't have a chance. Magic didn't have a chance to go up and get the football. J.R. Redmond standing at his own 38-yard line to receive the kick of Andy Crossland. Nearing the end of the third quarter, 44 seconds to play. Crossman boots it out of there. Pretty good kick. Fair catch Redmond and juggles it and then makes it and then starts to run. They could have called a flag on that, but they decided to let him get away with the one step. Kind of like traveling in the NBA. <laughs> so Arizona State takes over at their own 35 with uh, 36 seconds left to go third quarter. Now it's a uh, it's up to the Miami defense to try and hang on here. Yeah, it's up to a tired Miami defense. It looked like they're a little sluggish coming on this football field. And Arizona State starting to get a little bit of that momentum. You see them run out on the football field. 
it looks like Arizona State, if they can come down and put another score, whether it be a field goal or a touchdown, may get this thing a little bit out of reach for this Miami offense that's not been able to move the football. 49 yards on the cross one punt, no return. Mike Martin with the ball. And Martin will get four or five on first down. Benny Fortney there to make the tackle for the Miami defense. Starting to get into a pattern now with this Arizona State offense. They're coming in with two tight ends off the sidelines and really bullying this Miami defensive front off the football field. You see they're getting five and six yards of crack, and it has to concern Butch Davis on the sideline. His team is getting worn down up front defensively for the Hurricanes. 16 carries, 53 yards for Mike Martin. The Arizona State tailback, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. We've played three here at the Orange Bowl. The Hurricanes in their home opener for 1997 trail Arizona State 13-6. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after this. Miami Dolphins season tickets and single game tickets are on sale now. To guarantee your seat for the 1997 Dolphins season, purchase your season tickets today by calling 305-620-2578. Great seats are still available, and season ticket prices start as low as $170. Don't miss the chance to be a part of this exciting championship season. Call and order your Miami Dolphins season and single game tickets now. That thunder you hear? It's not an afternoon Florida storm. It's Bobby Bonilla hitting homers out of the park. The pennant race heats up when the Marlins take on the Expo. Game 1, September 23rd, 7 p.m. on Sports Channel. Start of the fourth quarter in the Orange Bowl, Arizona State with a 13-6 lead. The last time Miami lost a home opener was September 7th, 1985, a 35-23 loss to the Florida Gators. As Art Kehoe has his hands full with that offensive line, trying to get something going. Well, they're all looking for answers down there on that Miami sideline right now. He was concerned, Art was concerned during the week that ASU defensively, they do a lot of scheming up front and they cause you a lot of havoc. It's either going to result in big plays or not a lot of yardage, and right now it's resulting in the latter because Miami cannot get a consistent running game going. As we start the fourth quarter, it's second and five for Arizona State at their own 40-yard line. Mike Martin is the tailback, and Jeff Falk is the fullback behind Ryan Keeley. Keeley's impressed me today. A lot of poise. Martin. Dropped by Adrian Wilson, the true freshman defensive tackle after a gain of a couple. That'll bring up third and short. Look at the numbers through three quarters. Of course, the most important number, 13 to 6 on the scoreboard. You see rushing yards, not a lot for either team. Arizona State with the edge in the passing yards. Penalties have hurt them. Miami's had a couple of uh, big plays called back on penalties. It's amazing that Arizona State's winning this football game 13 to 6 with 12 penalties for 85 yards. But they, they made the third down conversions when they needed them. Miami's only one of eight on third down. Third and two for Arizona State. Mike Martin breaks into the open. And Mike Martin in Miami territory at the 41-yard line before Dennis Scott got him. Both of these backs are a one-two punch, and they're both big backs. And this time the senior, Mike Martin, at 6'2", 215. What a big third down and two run. You take a look right on the bottom of the screen. It's, this is where it's going to happen. Derek Ham takes an inside rush and gets double teamed at the point of attack. And number 59, Michael Smith, he was the only person not blocked, and he didn't come up to make the play. Strong safety, Dennis Scott, over for the tackle, but not until a big play is done for ASU. Another third down conversion, a gain of 18 from Mike Martin. Healy on the rollout. Goes short to Mitchell. Mitchell run out by Dwayne Starks, but another pickup of 11 and a first down. ASU is having their way right now with this Miami Hurricane defense. They're running the football at will, and on first down, Frank, is the huge key. They're gaining 5-6, and now with the pass play by Keeley out to the right side to Mitchell, another first down, and that gets the ball inside the Miami 30 at the Kane 29-yard line. John, we saw this last year in several games at the Orange Bowl. There just doesn't... The, the defense plays yep. well for most of the game, but there's no offensive spark. There's nothing to get them going. Well, Miami looks like they're coming with a little bit more pressure here on first down. Pitch to Redmond. Redmond to the outside, and uh, Damian Lewis runs him down, but Redmond picks up five on first down. Yeah, Lewis was there along with number 49, Cliff Jackson, in at the linebacker spot. 
He's coming off the field, replaced by number 43, James Sutton. But you see number 92, Lewis, trying to encourage somebody to get on the field for him right now. He comes down the line of scrimmage, and he shows his speed for a young freshman. He's grown up a lot today and two weeks ago for this Miami defensive front. Second down, four. The Orange Bowl crowd trying to get the defense fired up, but they may be wearing down. Redmond again squeezes through to the 20-yard line. Michael Smith has him wrapped up. That is going to be very close to a first down, perhaps a half-yard shy. Miami's doing a lot of catching right now on defense. They're not doing a lot of hitting. They're catching Mike Martin, and they're catching J.R. Redmond, and they're carrying him backwards. They're, they're getting taken for a ride, and closer to a first down, they're going to bring the chains out, but Redmond's a big back, and so is Martin, and they're, they're not taking him and installing him and moving him backwards. They're actually catching and going backwards towards their own goal line. Redmond, eight carries, 44 yards. 13.07 left to play in the Orange Bowl. Third and going to be about the length of a football. I think Miami's young defense has played reasonably well when you look at the total yardage today, John, but uh, the offense just hasn't gotten anything going. Yeah, I don't mean to sound negative about Miami catching uh, ASU running backs. They have played a stellar, they put on a stellar performance holding them to 13 points and really no big plays other than the touchdown on third down. But they've just been out on this football field entirely too long, frankly. They're getting worn down. This offense of Miami needs to do something. They've gone three plays and out, and that defense has been on the field a lot in the second half. Third down. Mike Martin has a first down. Derek Ham with the tackle, but Martin got four. And Arizona State will move the sticks with 12.58 to play. You see Arizona State, they're either going to attack you inside between the tackles or go to the short side of the field when they're running. And they're running now with number 29, Mike Martin. 19 rushes for 76 yards. Last week he had 15 for 64 and a touchdown. He hasn't got into the end zone yet today, but they're getting closer on the Miami 16-yard line. Clock moving now with 12.50 left to play. Here comes that two tight end set again, Frank, on first down. It looks like they're going to run right up the middle. Mike Martin, the tailback. It's Hawk, the fullback on the counter. Hawk hit by Eugene Ridgely. Oh, big play. And I think Eugene the ball Ridgely, came out yeah, of the there. ball came out of there, but I think Arizona State got it back. Yeah, Hawk does not have the football, but one of his offensive linemen does. Eugene Ridgely delivered a huge hit. Number 64, Randy Leaphart came up with it. Yeah, big hit by the Miami defense on first down. They give it to the fullback this time, Hawk. And he gets, he gets banged. The ball goes right to the offensive lineman. The center, left part, number 64, comes up with the ball. He's in the right place at the right time. A, a missed opportunity that time by the Miami defense. They create one right there. Re Eugene Ridgely puts his helmet on the ball, but it goes right to one of his offensive linemen. On second down, Healy on the roll. Fires outside, incomplete. He was going for Craig Spann, Dwayne Starks in good coverage. Yeah, nice position again by number 23, Dwayne Starks. Well, there, Randy Leapart, it was like an uh, Easter egg hunt. Look what <laughs> I found. His eyes probably came right out of his helmet. He didn't know what to do with the football. Luckily, he put two hands around it and just went forward. But that, that play, that incompletion, brings up now a third and seven. They're already in field goal range, Arizona State, but they want to get in and put this game out of hand right now. A touchdown possibly could do that. Third down conversions, and Arizona State's done a terrific job. As you can see, Miami has done a subpar job. Look for the middle of the football field, Frank. After motion, they should motion somebody and then go to the middle of the field. Third and seven. Flag down, and they're no play. They're going to stop this play before it ever started. Yeah, the right guard looked like number 75 jumped off sides. And you called it, John. They were going to go with the running play and be conservative. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five yards, replay third down. Well, that helps out the Miami defense. You take a look at the left side of your screen. Right there, the right guard, number 75, Victor Leva, jumps a little early, and that helps Miami, pushes them back out to the 18-yard line. But now that might bring in that, that offensive pass package that's been so successful with some motion and trying to attack the linebacking core of this University of Miami. Right now they've got Rod Mack out on the football field, and I believe Jeffrey Taylor. 13th penalty for 90 yards against Arizona State. Motion from Boyer. Miami comes with the blitz. There's Boyer again. And Boyer's going to be knocked out short of the first down at the Miami 10-yard line. Dennis Scott made the hit. And that'll set up fourth down and bring the field goal unit onto the field. That time, the outside receiver, Peter, ran into the end zone and cleared out Dwayne Stark.
Boyer had a track to get the first down, but a nice play outside by number 25, Dennis Scott. You take a look at the top of your screen. Keely will get the ball outside to Boyer. He's got plenty of running room, but number 83, instead of taking Dwayne Starks up the field, he tries to go back and, get, and block the strong safety, Dennis Scott, allowing both of them to stay there for the stop. That'll bring on Robert Neese with his uh, third field goal attempt of the game. He has made two already from 33 and 34 yards. Keeley will hold at the Miami 18. His kick, Neese's kick is on the way, and it is good. And Arizona State has extended the lead with 11 minutes and 45 seconds left to play here in the Orange Bowl. It's the Sun Devils 16 and the Hurricane 6. We'll take a break. We'll be right back here on Sports Channel. He was the first head coach in football history to win both a Super Bowl title and a National Collegiate Championship. He's one of only two active coaches who've led a team to two Super Bowl titles. He's one of the NFL's most successful head coaches. He's Jimmy Johnson. And every Sunday morning, the coach of the Miami Dolphins takes the hot seat on the Jimmy Johnson Show. Get into the mind of the master every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on Sports Channel and at 11.30 a.m. on NBC6. What if you can reduce your stress at work right now? What is the matter with you today? Relax. We got to get it done now. Breathe. Think, Herschel. Just think. Meditate. I you all the time. I know you can do it. Stress. You got to get it done. Relax. What if you got two hands? You Make go. friends. Herschel, you know I love you. What if you can learn from stress or tackle it? What is the matter with you today? I love you too, coach. 11.45 left to play. Greg Mark talking to his defensive line, the young defensive line coach of the Hurricanes. And his group's played reasonably well today. They've only given up one touchdown, but Miami trails at 16-6. Ryan Clement, only one of his last seven for 14 yards, missing his last five. So Miami's got to try and get some kind of spark offensively. Kickoff will be handled by Trent Jones. It is four. Jones to the 20-25 and knocked out of bounds right there at the 27-yard line. Here's the scoring drive for Arizona State. 11 plays, 55 yards. They took 351 off the clock, and Robert Neese with a 27-yarder, his third three-pointer of the day. Stephen Trejo made the special teams tackle for Arizona State. Canes take over at their own 27-yard line. Canes take over, and the defense only allowed the field goal, but it's still two scores the Miami offense needs to come up with. And they've only managed two field goals two Andy Crossland field goals to, to get six points to this point in the football game. Edger and James and Nick Williams set behind Clement. Ryan will put it up to the outside complete and dropped right there at the 38-yard line is Daryl Jones, the freshman out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, Daryl Jones getting some action outside, doing a nice job on the out route. That time, Ryan stepping into the throw. He checked the blitz first. You see him take a look. He comes out, takes a look at the blitz first. Little play action fake, fake to James and then delivers a rope outside to the fresh and wide out. Does a nice spin move to try to duck under and get some more yardage for the Canes, but a nice pickup on first down for this Miami offense. Picked up 12 and moved the sticks with 11-17 and the clock moving. Canes near their 40. Nick Williams with motion. Blitz coming. Clement reads it, delivers to Omar Roll. Tackled right away by Courtney Jackson, but Miami picks up seven on first down. Seeing a little bit of change in the philosophy right now of Miami. Two straight throws are getting in a point of this football game with 11.04 left to go in the game to really get a score quick and keep that defense to go three and out to get the football back. They need two scores. Miami coming in now with two successful throws. One onto the wide out, uh, the first play, and now coming with a quick hitch also outside to the same, receiver, to the same side of the field. Second and a long two for Miami. Edger and James. James got away. No, couldn't get away. Aubrey Battle made the tackle. And Miami in the second half really has had one good run from Edger and James, and that's been it. Well, I think up front they're getting beat physically right now. I think the, the loss of a couple people up front, along with having no success in that speed of Arizona State and the strength of Arizona State's defensive front really paying dividends. Aubrey Battle, number 97, that time halting James to no no uh, yardage, a loss actually, and he's going to get some attention from that medical staff of ASU as well. Second time battle's been down, a four-yard loss. And Miami will face a third and seven with 10.51 to play. Aubrey Battle, 
6'3", 289 junior out of Poway, California. You know, we talked earlier in the week with Art Kehoe, Frank, and his concern when they were drawing up some things on the board was the speed and strength of the guys up front. He said, we're really going to be tested this week with a lot of the games they do to try to pick up, get on the right people. If we do, we're going to spring a lot of people, Edron James and Dyrell McMillan, into the secondary. But if we don't, there's going to be a lot of bodies in the way, and, and that's what's happening right now. They're not getting on the proper people. And, and, we're really, and the Miami Hurricanes right now are forced to throw the football. It looks like that's the only way they can get some first downs in succession. Well, John, uh, both teams came into this game off victories over, you know, decidedly subpar opponents. And both teams came in with questions. Arizona State lost a lot of people from last year from that 11-1 team. And they said, well, do we have the players to step up? Miami had questions at wide receiver and in the offensive line. So far, Arizona State's answered a lot more of them. 42,219 on hand here in the Orange Bowl today. Big third down play for the Canes right now. Stunt coming. Clement under pressure just has to get rid of it to the outside and could not get it to Daryl Jones as Ryan had Jeremy Stott draped around his ankles. Well, as many times as Jeremy's jumped off sides, he's getting back right now. He made a big play there on third and long for Miami, putting pressure on Ryan Clement. Clement not able to set his feet and put some power behind that throw trying to get it out to his outside receiver but to no avail that brings a fourth down and the punt unit comes out for the Hurricanes and every time it seems Miami has a decent situation they had first and goal in the first half and lost four yards on first down they had second and three here lost four yards on that play Crossland will kick it away a oh, terrible kick into the wind but it's going to work out because Redmond's not going to return it so maybe he did it on purpose to keep it away from Redmond. It rolls dead at the 15-yard line. 10 minutes and 24 seconds left to go in the game. Arizona State leads by 10 over the Hurricanes. There's a new team in Florida. Sports Channel Florida and CNNSI are joining forces to bring you the most complete sports coverage available. Sports Channel's full schedule of live professional and amateur Florida sports combined with CNNSI's sports news coverage create the perfect complement for you, the Florida sports fan. A leader in Florida sports is now offering the world of sports through CNNSI, the sports news network. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. AutoNation USA presents Sunday Morning NFL, the most comprehensive coverage of Florida's three NFL franchises on Sports Channel's Sunday Morning Playbook. Get a complete preview of the day's matchups. Like the Dolphins, the Tampa Bay Bucks are hot, really hot. What does Buffalo have to do to beat Miami? Jacksonville in the driver's seat for the playoffs. Tune to AutoNation USA presents Sunday Morning NFL on Sports Channel every Sunday at 10 a.m. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. 10 minutes and 24 seconds left in the football game. Arizona State has a 16 to 6 lead over the Hurricanes. And take a look at the rushing yardage and what a difference wow. a half makes. Yeah, you go from 66 yards in the first half to matching Edron James's jersey number in the second half. And Arizona State, 72 yards and counting. They're doing a great job on first and 10 of running right down the middle of the Miami offense, uh, Miami defensive front. First down at the 16. This is Marlon Farlow. Takes a good hit from Nick Ward, but gets up across the 20 to the 21-yard line, a gain of five on first down. Marlon Farlow gets his first carry of the afternoon uh, two weeks ago. In their first ball game, he ran for 68 yards and had a long of 35. Did a nice job running off left tackle. That time, the Miami defense tried, had it contained to the inside. You see Derek Ham trying to bring him down with an arm tackle. He runs through that, and then number 51, Rod Mack, finally brings him down, but not until five yards was gained. Second and five for Arizona State. Mike Martin tried to bounce to the outside. Dennis Scott, Dan Morgan, and Eugene Ridgely combine on the tackle and hold it to a gain of about a yard or so. Dennis Scott playing in his first ball game of the 97 season. Missed the, the opener at Baylor, but he, he's had a great game today. You've mentioned his name quite a few times along with number 92, Lewis. You see Scott, number 25, coming from the outside strong safety position along with Dan Morgan and number 29, Eugene Ridgely from the free safety position. Sets up a third and short. Another tremendously uh, large play for this ASU offense. Third and a little more than two. Keeley under pressure from Lawson, got away. Keeley's going to run for a first down. Michael Lawson had a hand on him in the backfield and couldn't make the play. 
Nick Ward finally dropped Keeley at the 35-yard line. Great athletic play by Ryan Keeley. The, the redshirt freshman quarterback felt the pressure of number 97 coming from the defensive tackle. Just beats three offensive linemen off the ball. But then you see he stepped up all day, Frank, to elude the rush. He does it this time for a first down in a key situation in a key third down possession for ASU. Keeley picked up 11 on the play. Clock moving with 8.49 to go. Short side pitch. He's and gone. Out. Redmond has it. Mar Redmond stiff-arming Dwayne Starks, who finally knocks him out of bounds inside the Miami 20-yard line. But J.R. Redmond breaking a big one. You can see this Miami defense is so tired out on this football field. They have no burst left to get to the outside. And a great job up front by this ASU offensive line, creating a hole for a, a big back in J.R. Redmond to squeak through. And it looked like he was going to the house only stopped by the speed of Dwayne Stark. A 50-yard gain for J.R. Redmond. Look at right here, bang, bang on the outside. You see number 44, Jeff Polk, getting a big block on the outside. Now it's just a foot race, and Stark has the angle on J.R. Redmond and pushes him out of bounds close to the 17-yard line. Make that the 16. 8.39 to play. Arizona State leads by 10. Give to Martin. Martin loses Bumble. the football. He's gone. Nick Ward has it. Nick Ward trying to get by Keeley. And Nick Ward does. Nick Ward may go all the way. Nick Ward's going to take it to the house. How is this for a turn of events? Wow. Unbelievable. Just that when you think the game was over and they're going to go in to make it a three touchdown game or a three possession game. Miami comes up with a big play. I didn't think they had it left in them, but they showed you determination and never give up. Miami scores on a bizarre fumble and they're back in this football game. Nick Ward with an unbelievable turn of events for Miami. Martin is hit, just lost the football. Michael Lawson got a hand in there. Nick Ward scooped it up, and once he gets by Keeley, he's this gone. thing is over. It's over. It's a foot race, and he's the only man racing. He's racing himself to the end zone. You see Nick Ward, after the fumble caused by Michael Lawson, goes in for a defensive score, just what Miami needed with 8.23 left to go in this football game. An 84-yard fumble return by Nick Ward, the sophomore out of Dallas. Andy Cross went on for the conversion. A high snap. Popovich got it down him, and it was blocked. And Arizona State can turn this into a two-point play the other way. But the tackle is made by Jeff Popovich. A high snap, and the point after is blocked, and Miami still trails by four. Now, that makes it a four-point game. That makes it a touchdown game for Miami right now. They can't settle for a field goal to tie it, but that makes two weeks in a row that Miami, or two games in a row that Miami has converted on fumble recoveries for touchdowns. You see right up the middle. Number 91, Quincy Yancey, who is 6'8", to begin with, got a great leap and got a hand up and blocked it. He almost got one earlier in the game on a field goal attempt. This time he gets an extra point, but it forces Miami to score a touchdown, not a field goal, to even tie the football game. But there's still 8.23 to go, so again, it's gonna be up to Miami's defense to come up with a play. Yeah, this crowd starting to get back into this football game. You can see people starting for the exits when they were driving down the ball on the 16-yard line with first, first and 10. But Miami comes back with a defensive score. Now this crowd wants to get excited again. The snap on the extra point from Del Vecchio was high. Popovich did a good job to get it down. But Andy Crossman, who has a tendency to kick the ball a little bit low, just didn't get that one up in time, and the snap may have thrown him off a little bit. Although it was a high snap, Popovich did a great job of getting a clean hold. It was just a, a combination of a, a good jump, a good leap by the ASU defender and a low kick. Officially an 85-yard punt return for Nick Ward, but the extra point is blocked. You see Butch Davis and Chuck Pagano, his defensive backs coach, as Miami will get ready to kick it off. George Gaitan will kick it to J.R. Redmond and Marlon Farlow. Butch Davis wants his kicking team, his kicker, especially Guy Tan, to line the football down the field. He doesn't really want it to get to Redmond deep because he's been hurting this Canes on the Canes on special teams. So Miami's defense with their second touchdown scored in as many weeks. And we'll see if the Canes can ride some momentum. The kick to Redmond at his own six. Redmond bounces off Dan Morgan, who comes back to make the tackle along with help from Marquise Fitzgerald at the 33-yard line. Redmond's a load to take down. He showed you on offense and on special teams. There's a look at the score and the time remaining. The blocked extra point could come back to haunt the Hurricanes. 
Arizona State player down on the far side. It is J.R. Redmond who has his helmet off. He and Dan Morgan had just a thunderous collision. And now the crowd of 42,000 getting back into it at the Orange Bowl. Well, that hurts Arizona State if Redmond can't come into this football game. Mike Martin, the senior, he had the fumble on the 16-yard line. He's going to have to go back into the football game and wrap that football up with two arms. You know Miami's going to go and try to strip the football to make another big play on defense because the offense right now hasn't gotten it done. Miami's defense has forced three turnovers. First and ten. Marlon Farlow on the counter play. Farlow will squeeze out a couple of yards. Michael Lawson, Denny Fortney in on the tackle along with Jeffrey Taylor. Rod Mack looked like he's hobbling out of the game. Number 51, the middle linebacker coming near the Miami sideline. Take a look at that first down of ASU on the counter play, trying to get the ball back to number four, Farlow, but really no room to run. Great job by Nate Brooks, number two. Knew it was run all the way, pinched in from his cornerback position to force the running back inside. Mack off the field, Cliff Jackson in the middle linebacker. Miami's already lost Nate Webster. Keeley down the middle, it's caught. Great catch at the Miami 35. Still going is Mitchell to the 25-yard line with Dennis Scott hanging on. Keeley has done a terrific job of hanging in the pocket. And did he take a shot at the end of that play? hung in the pocket and delivered the football outside to Kenny Mitchell, the junior wide receiver. Take a look from the offensive back, just a play action fact, nice, a nice fake by number eight, and just takes a shot at the end of this play, but number 81, Mitchell hanging on against Dennis Scott, the strong safety in man-to-man -man coverage. Take another look at Ryan Keeley, and Matt Sweeney just put a lick on him. He did, and he, he came back, got up a little slow, but he's back under center to take the snap. Falk and Farlow, the running back. Farlow, wrapped up by Damian Lewis. Gain of maybe a half yard. Damian Lewis again with a big defensive play. He's been tough today. He's been tough. He's been the only guy consistently up front to stop this running game of ASU. You see him warding off defenders right there, pushes number 56, Kyle Murphy, to the ground and then gets to the ball carrier, Farlow. Six minutes, 40 seconds, and the clock moving. Miami has just given up a 40-yard pass play to Kenny Mitchell. Ryan Keeley doing a good job in the huddle, taking his time, going to use that 25-second clock as long as it'll go. You'll look for the snaps now to be snapped around 2 or 1 to use that clock. Second and 10 for Arizona State. Keeley stepping up. Keeley to the end zone, incomplete, going for Span. And just a little too high for him. Dwayne Starks had the coverage. Keeley had nothing but green grass in front of him if he decided to tuck that ball and run it. That time it may have, he went for the home run when all he needed was to go forward to meet. He would have ran out the back of the end zone. You take a look right here. He, nothing but open running room. Everybody's in man coverage. He goes for the home run and almost gets it, but only a foul ball in this instance, and it brings up a third and 10 for ASU. Third and 10 for Arizona State. Damian Lewis in on nine tackles today. Now looking to pressure the quarterback, third and long. Draw play. Mike Martin, tackled by Eugene Ridgely, just shy of the first down. Should be about a yard short. 6.04 to go. He's calling, he's going for it, Frank. They're yes, calling the big team into the, from the ASU sideline. At least that's the early indication. 5.50 to play here at the Orange Bowl. Fourth quarter, Arizona State leads 16 to 12. Deep in Miami territory at the 16-yard line. I think this is a good decision. This is the ball game right now. Miami has to score, score a touchdown offensively. And they haven't been able to move the football. Martin has the first down. Nate Brooks made the tackle, but Martin picked up five and got the first. Consistently, this ASU offensive line has been able to, no matter if Martin's running the ball or J.R. Redmond, has been pushing this defensive Kane line backwards. And in that situation on fourth and one, they get it done again. Mike Martin, 90 yards today. It's taken him 22 carries to get there. They've been tough yards sometimes. ASU now with 210 yards rushing. Miami only 66. Although, again, when you look at the overall performance of Miami's defense, I don't think it's been bad. They forced three turnovers, and they've allowed one touchdown, but they've got to come up big if Miami's got a chance here. J.R. Redmond taken down by Ridgely as he reaches the seven-yard line, a gain of four. 
Miami trying to substitute some defensive help, trying to get some rest up front. Looks like number 97 Lawson comes back into the game along with number 99, Denny Fortney. But it, they, that defense looks worn out. They've been on the field a lot in this second half, and J.R. Redman and Mike Martin have been doing a great job for this offense of ASU. Time becoming a factor, 4.37 left to play. Rod Big. Mack, we're told, has a left knee sprain. Doubtful he'll return. Second and six for Arizona State. Counter play to Redmond. Redmond gets down to the two, almost to the one yard line. Should Dennis be, Scott with the tackle. Should be a first, has down. a first down. Yeah. yeah. He's been a bull all day, Frank. Number 21, J.R. Redmond off tackle. Watch him go north south right here and punish some people from Miami. Doing a good, he's a big back. Number 23, Dwayne Starks comes in and tries to stop him short of the first down, but Dwayne's only 5'10", 175, and J.R. Redmond's around 6'1", 210 pounds. Four minutes left to go. Arizona State trying to put this one in the meat locker. Keeley falls, got it to Redmond, touchdown. They make it look easy, Frank, on the one-yard line, that offensive line. You have to pay credit to Arizona State. They've done a good job in this second half of running the football when they needed to, and they've done it on first down. That time, Redmond goes in for the score, may have put it out of reach. J.R. Redmond with the one-yard touchdown run, and we have another Miami player down. It's Michael Lawson, number 97, right at the goal line. Yeah, they win the battle right at the point of attack. You see a huge hole for Redmond to go through. You'll get another angle from the end zone. You see great oh, you blocking. I think his knee was down before he handed the ball off. Now, I'm not making excuses here, but... That's a call that, that you rarely see, but it should be called because I see it in other instances where a guy's knee is down and they're quick to make the whistle. I think I think the quarterback's knee was down before he made the handoff. Let's take another look at that. The officials, I know I missed that. Let's take a look and see if the quarterback's knee was indeed down. Oh, for sure oh, he's, he was he's down. Not, that's not even close. Yeah, that's not close. That happens a lot. He's, it's, he's lying on the ground when he gives him the ball. That's not called more than not. It's not called, and, and, and it should be. It should be a, a dead ball, ball on the four-yard line. But the officials missed it, and it's a score for ASU. Well, I'm sure that's one that Butch Davis will be sending to the Big East office. Some people will get a second look at that this week. You can bet on that. Nine plays, 67 yards. Of course, the big play, the 40-yard completion to uh, Kenny Mitchell, which set Arizona State up at the Miami 16-yard line. The conversion try from Nice is up and good, and with 352 to play, Arizona State has regained the lead at the 23 to 12, so Miami now needs a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal just to tie a long road ahead. We'll be right back at the Orange Bowl. He was the first head coach in football history to win both a Super Bowl title and a National Collegiate Championship. He's one of only two active coaches who've led a team to two Super Bowl titles. He's one of the NFL's most successful head coaches. He's Jimmy Johnson. And every Sunday morning, the coach of the Miami Dolphins takes the hot seat on the Jimmy Johnson Show. Get into the mind of the master every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on Sports Channel and at 11.30 a.m. on NBC6. Hey, Heineken's giving away season tickets to one of Florida's NFL teams. No. Yeah, get this. I went down to my local participating Heineken retailer, checked out the contest display, snagged an entry form, and now all I gotta do is watch Sunday Morning NFL on Sports Channel, and I can win tickets to an upcoming game! No. Yeah, and get this, if my team runs back the opening or halftime kickoff, I win season tickets for 1998. No. Yeah, hey, you want a Heineken? Yeah. See a local participating Heineken retailer for contest rules and regulations. <laughs> Every day, lots of people choose FedEx to take their two-day packages. Cost? About $8. Every day, lots of people choose UPS to take their two-day packages. Cost? About $7. Every day, lots more people choose the U.S. Postal Service to take their priority mail two- to three-day packages. Cost? $3. So, eight, seven, three, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Miami defense, they put up a pretty much a valiant effort today, forcing three turnovers, scoring the only Miami touchdown, but a couple of key third down conversions from Arizona State, and Sun Devils lead it by 11 with 3.52 to play. 
And you look at the numbers of Arizona State in their first two games, running the ball and stopping the run, and that's uh, that's Bruce Snyder's mantra over and over again, John. He says you throw to score, you run to win. And that's true today. You see the graphic there. Arizona State in their first two ball games have proven that fact to be true, and they're living by their head coach's words. Nice handling the kickoff chores now. Nice deep kick. Trent Jones fumbles it into the end zone. He'll have to stay right there. Miami gets it at their own 20. 3.47 left to go. And we'll look at the Arizona State scoring drive. Nine plays, 67 yards, four and a half minutes, culminating in the J.R. Redmond touchdown run. The big play in there, Ryan Keeley, a 40-yard completion to Kenny Mitchell. Well, you look right now for Miami to come out onto the football field and not huddle to go into their two-minute offense with 3.47 left to go in this football game. They need two touchdowns to, to pull this victory out, and you'll see Ryan Clement try to go to his young outside receivers. He's got uh, two freshmen outside with Omar Roll or, or Magic Benton in the slot. Edron James, the only running back. Clement under pressure, dumps it to James. James at the 30, 35. Edron spins up to the 42-yard line before the tackle made by Mitchell Friedman. Looks like an ASU player down, and it may be, it may be Aubrey Battle again. He was fighting cramps with his legs, number 97, the defensive tackle for Arizona State. But a nice gain on the play by Edron James, number five. Just a little flip pass out of the backfield. Big gain of uh, close to 22 yards. And I'm going to second guess here on the Miami offense, but I think throwing more to the running backs in, in, in similar fashion to that, just uh, because Arizona State brings so many people on stunts and blitzes, just filter that guy out across the line of scrimmage, and that's worked for them. Well, they get lost in the shuffle because they're blitzing, and, and when the Miami running backs look like they're going to gauge and block the linebackers, the linebackers no longer have pass responsibility, and the backs can get out, and Ryan can find them. He did that successfully two weeks ago against Baylor when he was scrambling around. He found Edron James on four- and five-yard flips that turned into 10 and 20 and 25-yard gains. You see there, although they are in a little bit softer defense now, it was there all game long. Well, Miami's offense just hasn't done enough to win this ball game today. Well, I think Arizona State, you have to give them credit, too. They come in and they run the football, and, and everybody knows that they're going to come in and base their game on running the football. I think he, where the credit needs to be given is their passing game over the middle of the field. They really took advantage of the Miami linebacking core. Yes, Miami probably has great speed at their linebacking core, probably better than they've had in the past couple of years, but the inexperience really showed today with motion and backs coming out of the backfield. That's where Miami's defense was really burned. I mean, you look at the turnovers and the penalties, and you say Miami should be winning this game. Yeah. Three turnovers by Arizona State and uh, double figures, double in, figures penalties. in penalties, but they've overcome that, and that's to their credit. Clement on the out route, caught by Reggie Wayne. Nice play at the Arizona State 44. Nice throw by Ryan to keep it outside. Reggie Wayne doing a good job going down to get the football. Another first down for Miami. That clock stops with the chain, chains moving, but there's only 329 left in this football game. Pick up a 14. First down, Miami. Ryan under pressure, and he's going to go down. Jeremy Stott got him. Only a four-man rush, but it got the job done. Jeremy Stott trying to make up for those offsides. He's made some big plays in this second half, Frank, and this time breaks right through the Miami offensive line. You see him right in the middle of the football screen. Little pressure outside, but there's Jeremy. There's nowhere for Ryan to go. There's nowhere to step up and throw the football, and Miami takes a timeout. A dejected Ryan Clement coming to the sideline, trying to figure out how they can get into the end zone with 3.06 left to go in this football game. 23-12, Arizona State on the verge of knocking off the Hurricanes and evening the records at 1-1 one and one for Miami. We're going to take a timeout with 3.06 left. We'll be right back on Sports Channel with the Sun Devils leading by 11. Miami Dolphins season tickets and single game tickets are on sale now. To guarantee your seat for the 1997 Dolphins season, purchase your season tickets today by calling 305-620-2578. Great seats are still available, and season ticket prices start as low as $170. Don't miss the chance to be a part of this exciting championship season. Call and order your Miami Dolphins season and single game tickets now. 
that thunder you hear? It's not an afternoon Florida storm. It's Bobby Bonilla hitting homers out of the park. The pennant race heats up when the Marlins take on the Expo. Game 1, September 23rd, 7 p.m. on Sports Channel. There's a new team in Florida. Sports Channel Florida and CNNSI are joining forces to bring you the most complete sports coverage available. Sports Channel's full schedule of live professional and amateur Florida sports combined with CNNSI's sports news coverage create the perfect complement for you, the Florida sports fan. The leader in Florida sports is now offering the world of sports through CNNSI, the sports news network. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. 3.06 left to play. Miami down 23 to 12. Back to play with a second down and 18. After the sack. Clement stepping up. Clement going to go deep for Daryl Jones. And Omar Roll can't make the play. Jones and Roll both in the area. The pass falling incomplete. Ryan trying to get, make it a jump ball. Give his receiver a chance to get downfield and then throw it as far as he can. Did a nice job of eluding the pressure to get outside. He escapes well and throws the ball downfield but no big play in the waiting arms of a Miami receiver. Thomas Simmons, number nine, had the coverage, third and 18. And John, I think it's significant that Magic Benton is not in the ball game at this point. Yeah, I don't think right now Magic uh, did enough in the ball game to prove he should be out on the football field. Arizona State shows blitz, here they come, and Clement overthrew Reggie Wayne and nearly had it picked off by Courtney Jackson. Yeah, you get a young receiver outside and a little bit of miscommunication by quarterback and receiver. Again, not sure maybe where he's going to run on the fade or if he's going to come on a quick slant. And, and that's exactly what happened on the outside. He's giving them hand signals and, and I guess didn't see it. Ryan wanted him to do one thing on the fade, and he ran the quick slant. So on fourth and 18, Miami has no choice but to go for it. Third downs, Miami 1 of 10, Arizona State 9 of 16. There's the difference in the ball game right there. You talked about the turnovers Definitely. and the penalties, and you think, my, well, Miami should be winning, but that's the big stat right there. On fourth down. Clement He's got time to down step the middle. away from the rush. Going deep. And it's intercepted near the goal line. Courtney Jackson has it, and down he goes at the eight. And Ryan Clement is down at midfield. Ryan, hopefully he's okay. Didn't see the tail end of the play, but he must have taken a, a big shot at the end of that de uh, de pass delivery. Tried to get it down to down in the end zone for a jump ball. Comes out of the game on his own power, but did a good job of just getting it off. Well, you can tell that Ryan is, is a little bit hurt, and he's certainly upset uh, at the performance today, just all around. Seems like he's been uh, taking a, a, a beating all day, and there he gets a shot, a two-hand shiver that puts him down around midfield he that, gives it that, all he has all the time but he can't win it by himself Frank uh, Courtney Jackson came up with the inter that's kind of a gratuitous shot you know you've got it you've got a chance to just take a shot at the guy in a game you're winning and you do it so Arizona State now will try and run out the clock as Mike Martin took the handoff and got a couple Ryan on the ground in a lot of pain looks like it's his lower back it seemed like when he took that shot it was to the shoulder pads and like you said Frank really no need for it but uh, 175 yards on 14 completions, and looks like he's in a lot of pain. Well, Ryan's a tough kid. We know that. And Miami, John, you know, they've got a short turnaround. They've got to come back and go to Pittsburgh Thursday night. So they have very little time to rest up and very little time to prepare. Yeah, hopefully he's not hurt as bad as it looks right now. Hopefully it's just a strain of his back, and he'll be able to come back and play in that Pittsburgh game. But as you said, their total schedule... It switches around the, the practice schedule gets shortened up a little bit the the travel involved when you're on the road it, a lot of things come into play and especially playing a, a long and physical game that defense is going to need some time to recuperate and some time to get refreshed again to go back at pit university of miami football has been brought to you in part by bell south nobody knows a neighbor like a neighbor
by Grand Prize Chevrolet Geo Oldsmobile, where Jimmy Johnson does business, located in Miami. By HIP Health Plan of Florida. By Sitco. Sitco says go. And by Office Depot, taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. Approaching two minutes to play, and Miami uh, about to fall to one and one with a home defeat, their fourth home defeat in the last two seasons, and that's certainly something that Miami fans are not used to. In fact, uh, 42,000, kind of a disappointing crowd here today. Is the atmosphere at the Orange Bowl really not what it used to be? But Butch Davis has a young team. He is definitely rebuilding this team. And that play to uh, Mike Martin was stopped before it ever got started by the officials. His flags are down. 146 left in the ball game. Arizona State with the 23 to 12 lead. And they have come in here and done what they needed to do to win. It, it certainly wasn't a, uh, a perfect game by Arizona State. They had three turnovers. They had double digits and penalties. But they ran the ball effectively. And that's what it took. Yeah, Arizona State had plenty of reason to lose this football game. If you look purely at the stats, too many penalties to possibly lose a game. And now you have them coming up and running the football so effectively in the second half. Just a tremendous job and a credit to that offensive line. Third down and nine. Mike Martin, 25 for 99 yards. And once again, it's Martin going down at the 13-yard line. Clint Hurt, the true freshman, making the tackle. That's been a tough day for the Hurricanes, especially along the offense. Well, as you said, Frank, this Hurricane team now has to get back and regroup from this loss. You know, you see Art Kehoe trying to console some, some of the offensive linemen, Mike Wayner trying to talk about some of the difficulties that they had moving the football on the ground, but now they have to come back on a short week and forget about this football game. This isn't a Big East game. Yeah, now that they have the loss, you know, that big picture at the end of the season about the national championship is a little bit diluted, but now they still have to get into that Big East schedule and they have to refocus their goals on what they need to do because, as you know, in the Big East, they've had great success. They've only run up against a couple difficult games in their in their brief history in the, in the Big East. So right now they have to go back and refocus on the Big East, see what they can do to win uh, and string out a couple victories, you know, along so they can win that championship. Yeah, the Big East championship has to remain their goal. You know, the, most people thought Miami is a second-10 team. I still feel that they're capable of being that, but they have some clear problems at wide receiver, it, just in terms of the young guys not being ready yet, although they have a lot of talent. And, you know, losing Jamie German this past week, you know, his college career is over with the NCAA ruling. You know, those things hurt. Losing Richard Mercier, that hurts, especially in a game like this where you need that kind of experience on the offensive line. Well, I think the weaknesses showed up. Right now, the receiver and the linebacking core of depth, you know, I think... Arizona State really hurt them with a lot of motion today, and it really helped helped out having experience in the last couple of years at those positions. Marcus Williams just did get it away. Wayne Starks at the Miami, or at the uh, Arizona State 43, looking to get some room, got a good block, but he's going nowhere fast. Dropped down back at the Miami 46, so he lost seven on the return. Trying to make a big play, they just miss another punt that time, the University of Miami special teams. Just getting this punt off. You take a look at the top of your screen. Number Nate two, Brooks. yeah, Nate Brooks coming in. And you even the official even indicated that he might have got a little piece of it. He may have thought he had it, but then he sees the punt go away and just can't believe it was right in front of him a second ago, and, and he just missed making another big play. Scott Covington in at quarterback for the Hurricanes. Is Clement still feeling the effects of that last hit. Covington dumps it out to James Jackson, the spin move, but Pat Tillman had him and lost him. Jackson, how did he step out of bounds? They say he stepped out back at the 50. Nice effort that time by the freshman running back, number 21, James Jackson. Look See, at Scott Covington and what he did. Yeah, two weeks ago against Baylor, three completions on eight attempts for 33 yards. Scott comes into the ball game with a minute three left to go. Ryan Clement suffering a back injury. He'll be done for his day is done. And now Scott will try to provide some leadership with a minute left to go, trying to get the Canes into a situation where they can score and try an onside kick. Second and seven. At midfield. Covington over the middle, complete down to the 35-yard line. Oh, oh, may go. 
and Omar Roll run out of bounds at the Arizona State 15-yard line. Nice job by Omar Roll. I, th I thought the middle of the field was open a little bit more today. There's a flag in the middle, and that play again, Frank, is going to come back. That's been at least three big plays on Miami's offense. They look like they're just going to turn the corner and make something happen, only to have that offensive line get called for a holding penalty. Take another look against the four-man rush. I don't see I, anything obvious there. Oh, on the bottom of the pile, number 68, Mike Wayner takes his right arm and actually tackles someone. There was no need for that to happen. I think that was a little bit out of frustration more than anything. So the big gain to Omar Roll of 35 yards will come back. Now just 54 seconds left to play. Yeah, that's something that Michael learned not to do because that was a big play that puts him in a chance for a scoring opportunity. Covington steps up to Reggie Wayne at the 45 of Arizona State. And Reggie runs out at the 42 by Jawan Cherry. Really like Reggie Wayne, uh, the way he runs routes. He does a good job of, of on the, especially the out routes, does a good job of getting separation. And you take a look at the sidelines, and Ryan Clement has to be disappointed. You know, it's his senior season. He had a successful debut against Baylor out in Waco two weeks ago, and now he comes out of the game with a little bit of a, a strained back. So hopefully he'll be able to bounce back next week against Pittsburgh. Covington again on the straight drop. Throws it underneath the coverage. And complete down at the 28-yard line, Daniel Franks with his first collegiate reception. Jason Simmons made the tackle. Big Bubba Franks out of Texas. 34 seconds left to go. Yeah, that's a big target, number 88. 6'6", 240 pounds. He's only a freshman. He'll have a great future here at the University of Miami. As the season goes on, I'd like to see him get the ball a lot more because people bounce off him. Covington again under pressure. Scott running away at the 30. Covington gets a block from Reggie Wayne and steps out inside the 16-yard line of Arizona State. Scott showing a little bit of mobility there, putting on the Jets, trying to get outside. There's only 20 seconds left to go in this football game, but you see Miami's offense trying to get on the board to create a situation for that onside kick, but they're going to have to get in on this play to have any, any chance in this football game. 20 seconds to go. It's 23-12, Arizona State. A couple of field goals from Andy Crossland and an 85-yard fumble returned by Nick Ward. The only points Miami has put up, and they even got the extra point blocked after the touchdown. Covington double pumps and throws it out of bounds. Intended for Reggie Wayne, covered by Juwan Cherry. Cherry that time not going for the fake of upfield. There's a short end zone now that he's playing in front of, so he knows Reggie Wayne can't beat him. Forces Ryan to throw, or Scott to throw the football out of bounds. And that'll bring us down to 16 seconds left on the clock. A look at Nate Brooks on the Miami sideline. Still talking about that punt. He thought he had blocked, and somehow he didn't get it. At least in his mind, he thought he had it. And I think the Hurricanes are a little surprised on how good Arizona State really was coming down uh, from the west. Covington on second and ten to the end zone, and uh, Omar Roll bumping with some defensive backs. No call. I'll just say uh, the ball was uncatchable. It was too high. And now 11 seconds to go, and it's third and 10. Yeah, Miami's been frustrated all day long on offense. Really, they never really got anything going, and I think it was due to a lot of the penalties really broke the Miami rhythm. Every time they pushed the football down the field and were successful throwing it, it always came back because of a holding call or an offsides call, and they never really got any type of rhythm, never got anything going on the ground, and that's really how they've always set up their passing game. They really run the football effectively. Well, they haven't run it effectively today. Early in the first quarter they did, but after that got virtually nothing on the ground. Third and ten. Covington to the outside, complete to Reggie Wayne at ten, and stops short of the first down. Four seconds left to go. Miami has no way to stop the clock, and that'll do it. Miami drops to one and one, losing their home opener to Arizona State as uh, Bruce Snyder and Butch Davis will go out and shake hands at midfield. The Sun Devils did what they needed to do today. Big third down conversions and the big running game. Big day for Arizona State and Coach Snyder. Bruce Snyder doing a great job of bringing his team down and winning in the Orange Bowl. Very tough to do for an opposing team, but they really came down and, and dominated this football game on both sides of the football. 
So your final score is 23 to 12, Arizona State over Miami. Thanks for joining us here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Be sure to wake up to Sports Channel's big Sunday morning lineup. Starting the morning off at 8.30 a.m., it's Bucks Magazine, followed by Dolphins Magazine, then the Jimmy Johnson Show at 9.30. At 10, it's an hour and a half of in-depth NFL pregame coverage on Sunday morning NFL. Then we go to Jacksonville at 11.30 a.m. for the Tom Coughlin Show, Beyond the Concentration Line. That's all, that's all right here on Sports Channel. Our next game will be coming up Pittsburgh, hosting the Miami Hurricanes. You can see it Friday at 7 p.m., Saturday at 11.30 p.m. For now, I'm Frank Fort for John Congemi. Thanks for watching the final score once again, Arizona State 23, the Hurricanes 12.